Good afternoon. This meeting, I will call this meeting to order. It is January 10th, 2023. Thank you for coming today and welcome. At this time, I'm going to um, ask Commissioner Finnegan to lead us in the invocation. If you can stand, please, please do so if you'd like to join us. And then after that, I'm gonna ask Commissioner Davis to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the honor. If you'd all pray with me, please bow your heads. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you now asking for your blessing upon this meeting. We ask you for your wisdom and discernment. I pray, Lord, that we seek your will and not our own. I pray, Lord, as we honor law enforcement officers today, that you offer them your protection, as well as those that serve in our military. Dear Lord, I also ask you to bless this country and the people of Citrus County. I pray for your protection and blessing over them. Lord, we come to you and we ask you of these things knowing that we are not worthy, knowing that we are sinful, but we ask your forgiveness because we also know, dear Lord, that you're full of mercy and grace. We love you and we thank you for your guidance and your love. We thank you for our dear Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and in his name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Deputy Clerk, could we have roll call, please? This is a regular meeting of the Citrus County Board of County Commissioners on this 10th day of January, 2023. In attendance are Chair Ruthie Schlebaugh, First Vice Chair Holly Davis, Second Vice Chair Rebecca Bays, Commissioner Diana Finnegan, County Administrator Steve Howard, and County Attorney Denise A. diamond Line. Thank you. Mr. Howard, um, before we proceed, are there any additions or deletions for uh, the agenda? There are two, uh, additional item E15, as well as additional information, which is E1E, please. E1E. Thank you. Board, would you like to, um, I'm looking for a motion for approval of the agenda. Chair, make a motion to approve the agenda with the addition of E15. Additional information for E1E. Thank you. Second? Second. Our Commissioner Finnegan. So we have a for, uh, motion made by Commissioner Davis, a second by Commissioner Finnegan. Thank you. Board, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. That passes 5 0. Four Chair. Zero. 4 0. Sorry. Hey, there's four. We had an opportunity here, ladies. There's four. <laughs> <laughs> okay, four zero. Excuse me. Okay, so the the uh, agenda is approved. We're at B, the consent agenda. We already did roll call. Did we? Yeah. Okay, sorry. The the agenda is approved. Uh, we're at item B, which is the consent agenda, and we have um, board. What's your what is your uh, what would you like to do with this? Do you want to take it as a, the entirety or? Madam Chair. Yes. I would like to pull B3. I would just like more information. Okay, B3, are you making that motion? Madam Chair? Yes. I would like to pull B14 and state that I will not be voting on that as I have a conflict of interest. Does it need to be pulled or she just recuses herself? Actually, actually, Madam Chair, uh, one of the other three commissioners needs to pull that so that it, uh, okay. Commissioner Finnegan can uh, make her recusal. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I would like to pull B14. And so I need a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda with, uh, by, with, without B3 and B14. Motion uh, as, as you stated. Thank you. And a second? Second. Thank you. I have a motion by Commissioner Davis, a second by Commissioner Bays. Is there any public comment? on the consent. Seeing none, 
Board, do you have any further discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 4-0. Okay. So now we would talk about B3. Thank you. Commissioner Bays. Yes, Madam Chair. I know this is just a matter of uh, presenting some information to us, but I always like to know why. Okay. So I just would like that stated. Um, if we're going to actually accept a report, then I would like to know the history, the background, and why we're accepting it. Yeah, and this is coming from a, you know, another agency um, outside of the Board of Commissioners, but we can definitely get that information and, and bring that back to you at the next board meeting, if that's acceptable. So we're going to table this to we the next, table that, please. to the 24th? That would be fabulous. Okay. Is there a motion to table this? I'll make the motion to table <coughs> item B3. I need a, I'm looking for a second. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Bayes, second by Commissioner Finnegan. Is there any public comment about B3? <coughs> Seeing none, board all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 4-0. Base. Okay, very good. B14. I pulled this, and where is my B14? Okay, B14 is to set a public hearing and discussion. That's what it says. Yes, ma'am. I've talked to Commissioner Finnegan, and this is uh, this application is personal to her, so she won't be voting on this. Okay. So how did, would you like us to proceed with B14? Because I can't seem to find it in my agenda book. Just a motion and vote to set it for public hearing. Okay. Um, and uh, Commissioner Finnegan will fill out the appropriate paperwork for her recusal. And how um, much time does she have to fill that out? Uh, it's already prepared, so I think she'll be doing it today at the end of the meeting. Very good. Okay. So B14, I'm looking for a motion to set a public hearing workshop. Motion to approve B14A, B as well, Denise, at this point, because it's just a public hearing, so. Yes, ma'am. Motion to approve B14A and B. I have a Second. motion. Thank you. I have a motion by Commissioner Davis and a second by Commissioner Bays. Is there any public comment? Yes, ma'am. Please state your name and where you live. Sabrina Watson, Lacanto, Florida. Uh, I have a number of questions about this that I actually think that the public needs to know before this public hearing, which has been set for February 7th, 2023 at 1 30 p.m. Uh, what we have here, it appears to me, is that uh, Commissioner Finnegan may be using her permission or her position to gain some property from the county. I'm not sure of that, so I'm just going to ask some questions, and I'm hoping that we can get some answers for the public. Uh, we're talking about 2,600 feet of roadway is my understanding that she wants uh, somehow closed off. Is this a gift, a loan, or a rental? Will there be a gate allowed on this public street? And who will maintain what? Will the two houses be deeded as a property, one piece of property, as is required for auxiliary buildings on separate lots? And will this option now be available to others, as in similar situations? People with uh, end of the road, homes, dead end roads, and is this setting a precedent? And if so, uh, we need to know how the public can apply for these same considerations as we, the people, and not as special favors for elected officials. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak to this item? Okay, I'm going to close that board discussion. Since there were some legal questions in there, how do you, would you like to proceed, Madam Attorney? Uh, it, it's, it's at the board's pleasure at... Uh, this motion today is just to set it for public hearing. I can uh, address some of the, the questions or we can address them at the time when you actually hear the, 
the application. Today, you're just setting the hearing. So well, it's at the board's pleasure. What, what well, I think would... the, the person that asked the question is here. So I'm, I mean, let's give, let's give some answers. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, I guess it's, uh, I think the first statement was 2,600 feet. I'm not exactly sure um, how long it is. It's a small portion of a roadway. It's not the entire roadway. But I don't have that exact figure in my head, so I can certainly um, email Ms. Watson and let her know the, the size. Uh, as far as is it a gift, a loan, or a rental, I, I don't really know um, what is going to become of the property after the road is vacated. That'll be up to the property owners to decide how they're, they're going to use the property. Because as you know, when we do a street vacation, uh, the street is vacated to the center line. And the property on either side of the center line go uh, basically accedes to the property on either side. So, um, you know, whatever is vacated becomes part of the property on either side of what was vacated. Uh, I don't know whether there will be a gate. There won't be a road there anymore. So I don't know why there would be a gate. But again, the county really has no control over the property once it's turned over to the private owners. Uh, so something. I wrote ox on other. I'm not sure. I can't remember what that was. Will, will this option be available to others? Oh, absolutely. Uh, any county dedicated right of way can be vacated so long as all of the requisite um, objective criteria are met. When someone makes an application to have a road vacated, there are certain criteria that the staff applies. And in this case, staff, uh, from what I read, is recommending approval, which means that the applicant complied with all of the requirements of our code. So yes, it can be offered to others, and you regularly see street vacates. So. And will this be setting a precedent? Um, it's not really setting a precedent. It's a, it's a provision that's available in the code. So others most likely will be doing the same thing. Very good. Well. Um, this will be on the, um, well, we need to take a vote first. Right. On setting it for a public yes, hearing. Yes, thank you. I don't know if Commissioner Finnegan has said on the record yet that she's got a, a, a conflict. I said earlier, but yes, I will not be voting on this due to a personal conflict. That you could, um, that it could help you or hinder you. That it could help, help me or, or hinder, hinder you. me. Right. Personally, yes. Personally. Thank you. Okay, and that's good enough for you? Yes, ma'am. So, board, do you have any further discussion on this? I do understand this. Unfortunately, it should have happened before you were commissioner, and the same happened to me. But everything will be public, you know, out there transparent. So, you, if you come on the 7th, I'm sure even more answers will be given to you. So, board, at this time, if you're in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? And one recused. That passes 3-0. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, after the meeting, also, just so you all know, I will send a copy of any of our regulations relating to street vacates to Ms. Watson. Very so good. she'll have that, too. Thank you. Okay, moving along. Item C, we have five proclamations today. And, Board, what is your direction for this? Madam Chair? Yes. Motion to approve item C, one, two, Three, four, and five. Second. Thank you. A motion made by Commissioner Bays, second by Commissioner Davis. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 4 0. And if we can all go out front. Thank you. While you come down, uh, ma'am, uh, will the Coochie Regional um, elect come forward, please? Come. Yeah, oh, thank you. Could with the Lacucci River Corp. Cor Cooperative, cooperative, excuse me, um, come forward. And do you have the big trophy? Yes, I do. <laughs> the Stanley Cup. So, there you go. Madam Commissioners, uh, Mr. Howard, thank you for having me today. Um, my name is Oh, you want to say, okay, go ahead. Yeah, my, my name is Gary Steele. I'm the district manager for the Citrus County office for Withacoochee River Electric. Uh, we serve about 30,000 of your homes and businesses in the county. And uh, it's just our pleasure to be here. As a cooperative, every year we give back our margins. Uh, we allocate them to our membership. So 
we don't have outside investors. We have hometown investors. If you are a member of the co-op, you're part owner of our company. So with that, you share in the profits. Uh, every year, our board decides how much of those capital credits uh, allocations they can release. This year, we released $22 million back to our members. Of that, the county is going to get a check similar to this, but much smaller, <laughs> uh, for $35,936.44. And with me today is uh, Mr. Ralph Burden. He's a longtime employee, and uh, he's my superintendent. He's over all the line crews for the uh, Citrus County office. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> For those individuals representing American Water Works, come forward, please. So, so uh, <laughs> luckily, I typically don't need a microphone. Uh, you can usually hear me. Uh, my name is Greg Taylor. I'm with the Florida section of American Water Works Association. Uh, the American Water Works Association, international organization of water professionals, manufacturers, contractors, engineers, uh, anyone, meter readers, everything you can think of to get water to you. Uh, we're all consumers of it. We all use it. Um, uh, we're part of the Florida section, which is one state and a massive tens of thousands, actually over 100,000 people. Um, and so what we have is we have a, a best tasting drinking water competition, a uh, fun competition to celebrate water, the people who purvey water, the people who get you water to you, to your tap. Um, and so we have a competition. Uh, we have a regional competition, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, which then goes to state and then eventually over to the association. Uh, which uh, these guys will hopefully uh, participate in and represent Florida. Uh, and it's in Toronto. Uh, like I said, international, barely. But no, uh, we have people all over the world. So, Russ. Hello, I'm Russell Ferlita. I am the chair for Region 4 of the Florida Section American Water Works Association. Uh, this is the second time in three years that Citrus County has won this particular award. And this really is an operator-based uh, centric award. These guys work night and day. They work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They don't get to take Christmas off um, because we still use water on Christmas, right? So this is a very important award and it's a very prestigious award um, to win it two times in three years at the region level, which includes the, the regional counties, including Citrus County, you know, Pinellas, uh, Hillsboro. Um, guys should be very proud of the water that you make. Uh, and this year you guys went on to win the state, which Greg just spoke about it a second ago. So we present you with the, we can call it the Water Stanley Cup. Um, <laughs> this is the, the traveling trophy. And as you can see, it's all the winners over the past so many years. And then once these things get filled up, then we'll, we'll put that in the section office and then we will start a new one. Um, we, you do get your own plaque for winning in 2023. Uh, so your name will be on here. And you do permanently get to keep uh, this plaque. So congratulations again. You guys did a fantastic job. Yeah. I need everything. <laughs> wow. 
right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and we're going to read the talk's proclamation for a few no. moments. Do you have the placard that was up here? Uh, uh, <laughs> Would the representative from uh, Ms. Ginger West come forward, please? Ready? Okay. All right, here we go. The Board of Commissioners of Citrus County for the proclamation in honor of Ginger West. Where Ginger West was the founding executive director of the Citrus County Family Resource Center. Ginger West was her husband. Ginger West and her husband, John, began a Christmas project quite a few years ago that started an Inverness Badcock store that Ginger and her husband home. The Citrus County Family Resource Center has provided Christmas presents for more than 2,000 Citrus County children. And whereas Ginger West gathered and distributed clothes, blankets, etc., for those in need to stay warm and distributed food to the hungry in our community. She was determined to and very adept at finding a way to help whomever needed food, clothing, and shelter. She assisted people who had medical issues who could not afford a doctor. She assisted people who navigating the complexities of government issues. And whereas Ginger West has received many artists, including being recognized by the Chamber of Commerce and named the Chronicle Citizen of the Year in 1980. Ms. West was not in, interested in public recognition. She was inspired by helping people who needed assistance the most and whereas Ginger West passed away on December 18, 2022. Citrus County has been blessed to have had Miss West residing in our community. She worked very hard to help people in need and inspired many others to do the same. Citrus County is a better place because of Ginger West's lifetime of work right here at home. Now, therefore, the Board of County Commissioner of Citrus County, Florida, in honor of Ginger West, designate January 10, 2023, a Ginger West Day in Citrus County, Florida, signed by all five county commissioners. Why Michelle's composing herself, I just want to say that for years in previous business, I had the honor of working with Ginger closely in the nonprofit arena, and she did not have the easiest population to work with, but she could see through trials and tribulations and offer her help and support tens of thousands, I would say. not uh, People knew her for being the Christmas angel, but she, far beyond Christmas, with showering and helping the homeless, I mean, her arms stretched wide for Citrus County, so she was a true gem, and she will be missed. Um, I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting this part, so... Um, I obviously want to thank the commissioners for honoring my mom in this way. Um, she would have hated this. <laughs> Absolutely would have hated this. Um, she really did try to just work behind the scenes. Um, her uh, ability to just see people for who they are and not their circumstance um, is really pretty unmatched. I haven't met a lot of people that are able to do that. And um, my mom was just, she wanted to um, help people um, and not just scratch the surface of basic needs, but she really wanted to form relationships and um, understand uh, what uh, people's more than just a, a basic need. She wanted to understand what she could do to help them for success for their lifetime, not just to you know, get something warm for their belly. She wanted to really help them uh, be successful long-term. So 
Uh, thank you so much for this. I wasn't expecting to say anything. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much for honoring her in this way. Will those individuals representing Human Trafficking Awareness Month come forward, please? The Board of County Commissioners of Central County for the Proclamation Human Trafficking Awareness Month. Whereas human traffic is a form of modern day servitude and is a crime against humanity that violates the most basic human rights. And whereas, whereas, whereas human traffic occurs when an adult or child is recruited, harbored, obtained, or exploded through for, force, fraud, or coercion for the purpose of sexual exploitation, forced labor, involuntary servitude, debt bondage, and other methods of captivity. Nationally, the crime National the criminal enterprise of human traffic is second only to illegal drug trade in terms of the speed of its growth and being among the most lucrative traffickers lure their victims with promise of love, protection, adventure, a sense of belonging, and opportunity, then using multiple means to control their victims, including beating, rape, isolation, drug, or alcohol dependency, document withholding, and psychological and emotional abuse. And whereas traffickers find their victims through social networks, the neighborhoods, the internet, our schools, Juveniles in the commercial sex trades are commonly between the ages of 14 and 16 years, and it's estimate one out of five endangered runaways, runaways reported to the National Center for Mission and Exploited Children were likely sex trafficked victims. Through the Tri-County Human Traffic and Response Team, our local community unites to combat this modern-day servitude and brings together nonprofit, government, and private sector businesses in prevention, prosecution, education, and awareness efforts to restore freedom and dignity to survivors. Now, therefore, the Board of County Commissioners of Citrus County Florida proclaim the month of January 2023 as Human Traffic Aware Month, Awareness Month in Citrus County Florida, signed by all five county commissioners. First of all, Madam Chair, and distinguished members of the commission and to all the assembled public as well and citizens. Um, first thing I want to say is I feel a little underwhelming because I didn't bring a check nor a trophy. <laughs> um, but we are very thankful to join with you in this proclamation today. I, um, I'm a 27 year law enforcement veteran. I spent over half of my career fighting human trafficking. And I can tell you that these hands have held some of the most broken people in our society. And my eyes have seen some of the most deplorable acts of criminal activity that you can imagine. When you carry out a little girl or you carry out a little boy, or you wrap your arm around a girl, a, a woman or a man that has been ravaged by this thing we call human trafficking. We look at it as 40 million victims is what the ILO says, 40 million today. Human trafficking victims in our own communities, $150 billion a year. We have to stop this. And somebody says, well, what does a proclamation does? It makes a statement that Citrus County is not gonna tolerate this, that this activity has to end. I was not supposed to be here today. Uh, Sarah, who is the president and founder of The Prices Journey was gonna be here and she wrote out a beautiful speech that's much more eloquent than I can ever speak It's just an old street cop. But I wanna read one paragraph that she said as we wrap this up. She said, at The Priceless Journey, we vow to partner with those who stand on the front lines fighting against the current to change our history and make tomorrow a better place for the next generation. We vow to develop resources that proclaim life, freedom, and liberty to those who have been held captive to the slavery of our day. We promise to do what we can to change the trajectory of one life at a time. And it reminds me of a statement I heard one time that said simply this, a man can survive 40 days without food, three days without water, about seven minutes without air, but only 30 seconds without hope. The priceless journey brings hope to those who have been hopeless and a voice 
to those who have been made voiceless. And together, all of us standing together as a community can say not here, not now, and not ever. Thank you so much. Will those representing law enforcement and appreciation day come forward, please? The Board of County Commissioners of Citrus County, Florida Proclamation Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Whereas the law enforcement officers of Citrus County play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedom of Citrus County, and whereas law enforcement officers of Citrus County are daily risking their lives to ensure that each citizen can live in a safe and secure environment, and whereas law enforcement officers work in partnership with their community to protect life and property, solve neighborhood problems, and enhance the quality of life in this county. And whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibility, hazards, and sacrifices of their law enforcement officers, and whereas the deputies of Citrus County Sheriff's Office recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. Now, therefore, the Board of County Commissioners of Citrus County, Florida, call upon all patriotic, civic, and educational organizers to observe the day of January 9, 2023, as Law Enforcement Appreciation Day, with appropriate ceremonies and observations in which all of our people may join in commemorating law enforcement officers past and present, who by their faithful love and devotion to their responsibility have rendered the dedication service to our communities and in doing so have established them for themselves an inviolable, enduring reputation for preserving the rights and security of all citizens. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Citizens County, Florida, Proclaim January 9th, 2023 as Law Enforcement Officer Appreciation Day in Citrus County, Florida, signed by all five county commissioners. Law Enforcement Appreciation may just be a day on paper, but we do truly feel it every day of the year from all of our community members and the support is just overwhelming. I do feel like that's what separates Citrus County from other places around Florida and even the nation. So we do really thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. At this time, we're on item D. It's open to the public. Anyone that wishes to address the board at this time, please step forward. I ask that you fill out a green card and hand it to the clerk, and you will have three minutes to speak. If you are registered as a group, you will have five minutes to speak. All comments are directed to the chairman. And please, when you step up to the podium, please state your name and where you, your address, please. Thank you. Forgive me, I need to gather my thoughts. Uh, Sabrina Watson, Lacanto, I'll be speaking for the Exceptional Life Project today, so uh, if you would give me five minutes, it would be appreciated. The Exceptional Life Project uh, raises awareness of items Ms. that are... Ms. Watson, go ahead. hold on. We'll stop her. Do, you, do we have a letter on file? Okay, go ahead. I just had to get that housekeeping done. Okay, could okay. I have my five minutes back? Yes, please? you can. Thank you. There you go. We are here to raise awareness of items that are of concern to communities and citizens by providing community education, develop and encourage engagement of citizens, research, and document items of concern. Today, I'd like to start out with our Florida Constitution. I would like to read Article 1, Section 4, Freedom of Speech and Press. Every person may speak, write, and publish sentiments on all subjects, but shall be responsible for the abuse of that right. No law shall be passed. No law shall be passed to restrain or abridge the liberty of speech or of the press. 
In all criminal prosecutions and civil actions for defamation, the truth may be given in evidence. Section five, the right to assemble. The people shall have the right peaceably to assemble, to instruct, to instruct their representatives and to petition for redress of grievances. I would then like to refer to maximums of law 11W. In the presence of the superior power, the inferior power ceases. The less authority is merged in the greater. Does that mean that our time limits here uh, are actually a violation of the Constitution? It's a good question. Let's talk about core money, the core business services real quickly, again, in the spirit of educating the uh, citizens. The core business services um, are funded solely by taxpayer dollars, as far as I can tell. Um, but it appears that Core Business Services is now sponsoring luncheons at the chamber, at the Citrus County Chamber. When I questioned this, I was told that they paid for it with private earned income. How can a business that is funded and financed by me, the taxpayer, we, taxpayer, we the people, have earned income that is private, that they can use to go to parties and throw uh, sponsorships at the Citrus County Chamber of Commerce. How, why is that money not coming back to the ta taxpayers? And why is this still happening? This was supposed to be originally, on my understanding, a CARES Act kind of thing, and yet it's still going on. So again, I would just like an answer to the question of how they can have private funds when we, the people, are actually paying the bills. Um, I have another item that I'd like to read to you in the state constitution. Under section, uh, I'm sorry, article two, section five, I would like to uh, let people know that uh, there is an oath of office that all elected officials actually have to s say and sign. It says, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support, protect, and defend the constitution, defend the constitution and government of the United States and of the state of Florida that I am duly qualified to hold under the constitution of the state and that I will well and faithfully perform the duties of office on which I am now about to enter. So my question here is, yesterday at the legislative meeting, did Mo Baird in fact violate her oath when she asked a legislator to make public records private records? I guess we'll find out sooner rather than later. All right, my uh, last item on the list, or actually uh, the one question that didn't get answered about vacating the property is once again, will these two pieces of property be merged as one titled piece of property? With a piece of property on the end being unable to be sold if there is not a road to that piece of property. Um, I apologize that I didn't, didn't follow up with that then. Um, let me see what else I've got here. Uh, thank you very much, Doug and uh, board for the file on the FWC. Unfortunately, all I see in here is stuff about hyacinth. It doesn't show anything about the, the pollution that we're dumping into our waterways on a daily basis for other forms of um, vegetation that's out there. It doesn't show anything about the animals and the mammals that we are giving cancer and killing out there with this pollution. La so, um, and then I would ask, is there still a workshop being scheduled? And hopefully we don't have some kind of a backdoor deal being made, and I apologize if that sounds like an assumption. It may or may not be an assumption. I would also lastly like to address the folks that were just here about human trafficking. It is truly a noble endeavor that anybody has the, what it takes to handle that. But my question to that organization is, and I would be happy to help them with that, are we holding the people accountable, such as Child Protective Services who lose 30,000 children a month, lose 30,000 children a month? Where do they go? How do you lose them? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Barbara Ocasio. And this is my partner in crime, Mariana Ocasio. And I'm only allowed three minutes. Am I allowed to take her three minutes? I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, thank you for allowing me to address you today. As you know, the state of Florida has 67 counties, and most, I can't say all yet, have commissioners who are not keeping their oaths. 
I don't know if there is a race or competition between many of you, your fellow county commissioners, to see who can build the most buildings, have the most businesses, or the most roadways, or who is spraying the most in the water so they can have boats go through. <clears throat> Sorry. The roadways with herbicides and pesticides killing not just the unwanted weeds, but weeds that fish feed on, such as duckweed. And who can fulfill their wish list first? Many people have been moving from their homes to cheaper, less crowded, overbuilt counties for years. We are running out of places to move like that. Why are certain businesses renting from this county dirt cheap? Why is everything on the backs of the taxpayers? There is something really wrong with this picture. Overtaxed for wish lists, wished lists, lists, or it's local politicians overspending, and at this rate, our county is going, people won't be able to afford it and move. There won't be no place pretty soon to move to. Or is it just being done to make people move away that when you guys want to push your highways and big businesses here, Nobody will be left to fight for it. <clears throat> Voting in noise pollution and wish lists for the commissioners or other small politicians and friends, for example, should not even be considered until the county is updated and the infrastructure is fixed. Using money other than this is wasteful spending. Raising people's taxes is an excuse to spend more and not what you were voting voted in for. It's still not too late to help to do the right thing. Stop rubber stamping everything. Really do your homework on what you are asked to, to vote in and fix this huge mess that was being going on for many years instead of joining in on the mess. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Thank you so much for allowing us this time that we have. My name is Vicki Spiller, and I am a resident of Lacanto. I've been here since 1976. So good afternoon. My name is, like I said, Vicki Spiller. Um, do oh, you I'm have so a, a letter on file? Yes, ma'am. Oh, so that's sorry. what she's waving at yes, me. Five sorry. minutes, please. Um, good afternoon. My name is Vicki Spiller, and I am the director for Basics United, Inc., and we are a 501c3 homeless outreach here in Citrus County. I'm also the coordinator for the Citrus County Cold Weather Shelter. Our organization serves our homeless through relationship building and providing daily necessities as we help them become housing ready. I'm grateful to have a few minutes of your time to begin a conversation and build relationship with my local government, in, the order, in order to address the crisis of homelessness within our community. According to the Mid-Florida Homeless Coalition website, in November of 2022, there were approximately 600 and 200, excuse me, and 62 people experiencing literal homelessness in our community. I know that this number is currently higher because during Christmas, the cold weather shelter was open for five days straight and we did get some new names on our roster. And we'll have a little bit more information on this as the weeks come when the point in time count is done. Out of those four counties, Mid-Florida Homeless Coalition serves in the continuum of care, Citrus, Hernando, Lake, and Sumter. Citrus County holds 0.17%, the highest percentage rate of homelessness to population, according to our census from 2021. Now, 0.17% does not sound like a lot but compared to the 0 0.09 and 0 0.02 in the other three counties, I do believe that it is something that we should address. Out of the 262 clients, BASICS, our organization, serves approximately 72 of them, over, um, and over 50 of them came to the cold weather shelter this season, ranging from ages one years old to 79 years old. One third of the clients served are over 55 years old. 36% were female. 65% have some sort of disability. 25% have chronic mental health disabilities. And 10% were veterans. 
Now I present these numbers to you because I believe it's important that I paint a picture of what I see on a daily basis in order that you may understand my vantage point that I am presenting to you from. After working with those experiencing homelessness for nearly 22 years, all of which have been in Citrus County and as an LPN for 20 of those years as well, I have a deeper understanding of the dynamics that lead to homelessness as well as those barriers that create difficulty to climb out of it. Getting a job is no longer a viable solution to the majority of those I serve. As you can see, many are over 55 and or disabled and also have mental health conditions. It has come to my attention that the safety for these people is a high priority at this current time that we are in, as many of those who are homeless are vulnerable to become victims of sex crimes, theft, violent crimes, injury, and death due to motor vehicle accidents while crossing the street, and some of them do, dying due to the elements combined with poor health, drug and alcohol addiction. I am well aware that you are all intelligent enough to understand all these things, and we all scratch our heads trying to figure out ways to combat this crisis. I have a proposal that I would like to explore over time with all of you, as well as with our community, that may provide a, hot, a nightly safe haven as well as a daytime one-stop shop, so to speak. So that way we can have multiple level of opportunities to address the chronic issues and begin to provide the best quality of life for our citizens as stated in your mission statement. I'm approaching a resolution somewhat in an unconventional way. I am first presenting to you and to our community before anything on paper even begins. No business or project plan until I have met with my local government, have discussed your ideas, your thoughts and concerns, as well as developed a relationship with those in our code enforcement and land develop agencies. I wanna develop a plan with my community, not fight for something because I believe that you understand the benefits outweigh the hurdles that we must overcome. I believe we can reduce the arrest for trespassing, and frequent violations of the law. It's Thank up. you very much. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say that I hope that we can meet to discuss further details and on my thoughts of this subject and how we can work together as a community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Afternoon, my name is Mr. John Hancock. I live in Crystal River, actually Crystal Manor. And I have two separate issues. One is the retention ponds in Crystal Manor. They need to be maintained better. I actually tried by my home to clean one, but my little tractor can't do the work. So if the county could do its due diligence to get these retention ponds cleaned, maybe then the issue of the flooding will be less severe. The second issue is I live off of Bluebell Drive, and there's power lines that are maintained by Duke Energy as private property. I get that. And people go out there, they take their side by side, their little four wheelers, they go out to have fun. Not a problem. My problem is that they turn out to be trash in the area so severely, and it's building up, and the residents out there who live out there would like to enjoy a quiet night, and at midnight and one o'clock in the morning, you're hearing music. Now, I live a half mile and the crow flies from the area where they party. And my wife and I can hear it inside our home. A half mile of the crow flies, there's a wooded area, there's homes, and then there's us, and we can hear it. We contact the law enforcement, they never showed up. The December 10th, I believe, they were called out there because there was a fire that these guys started and just let it go. And the county had to respond. How much more do the people in Crystal Manor have to put up with these people who are coming from somewhere, partying all night, beer cans, bottles of booze, and actually some drug paraphernalia out in these areas? We have, well, I don't have kids, but people out there do have small children, and we don't need to be subjected to this. I've just asked the county to do its due diligence to go out there, either get Duke to do something about it, or have the county go out there and do law enforcement because these guys are driving, they're drinking and driving, and at the minimum, they'll put money back into the pockets of the county because you charge them with fines they gotta pay, so on and so forth. But this has to stop. 
And I do have photos, and I will give them to whoever I need to give them to. Doug or the Doug. clerk? Thank you. Hopefully we can get this resolved, and I don't have to come back because I'm retired. I have nothing better to do. But the people <laughs> in my area deserve peace and quiet. I mean, I don't mind kids going out and having fun. I get that. I don't think kid wants myself. But at what point do we have 10 cases of beer cans scattered all over the place? We got car parts. We got old chicken coops. We got 15, 20 huge trash bags of trash that people just throw out there. At one point, do we need to say, you know what, this needs to stop? And kind of commissioners, I laid on your feet to take care of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's always nice to see you, so come back. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. I'm George Benson. I'm a resident of Cambridge Greens. And I'm here to address the septic to sewer program. Um, unfortunately, I can't seem to get a very good explanation of everything. We've heard all kinds of stories. We've had a couple of meetings and we're supposed to have been told what was going to happen, but all we do is all we did was get scared to death because we come up with big figures of ten thousand, twelve thousand dollars, fifteen thousand that each homeowner is going to have to spend. I am one hundred percent behind the septic to sewer. I think it's a wonderful program and I think it's needed and it's being done for the benefit of all of us, all Floridians. Therefore, it should not be on the backs of the individuals who happen to live in that neighborhood that's being done at that time. I think that uh, I understand that we have to pay for hookups and all that. That's, that's reasonable enough. But the uh, major cost should be picked up by the county or the state in some form. And I think that this is what I want you to address I don't know how you're going to do it, but that's your problem. But I hope that you will uh, do a lot more work on that and hopefully find some help for the residents of our communities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Benson. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Diana Bolas. I live in Inverness. Happy New Year. Um, I am uh, waiting to hear back from the county. I've been uh, emailing uh, with the administrator's assistant, and I've, I'm still wanting to know um, how the builder Vandervock and Scott Adams at Moon Lake Investments um, can be building homes and denying that they built the home because nobody built my home. Can you imagine if you moved into a home and the people that were involved in building it claim that they didn't build your home? This is where I'm at. Um, the building department should be holding builders accountable. Um, if you look at their website, they say that, you know, they want to make sure people are you know, trying to do a very good job and, you know, they should be worried about their reputation and things like that. But how bad is that like not going the right way if they don't even admit they built your house? Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is I was just wondering if everyone here is aware of the recession that we're heading into. Mm -hmm. Um, I just wanted to ask because when I hear about all this growth and buildings and, you know, all this, this growth that you guys have planned, uh, what are you doing to reduce people's taxes in a coming recession and in a time where um, eggs are costing like $8? Um, you know, I think that if you guys could maybe answer some of those questions so we could understand why have you chosen this time to do all this growth management at a time that we're getting into a recession and, you know, people are having a hard time paying for groceries. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. 
Okay, at this time I, oops, well, I almost missed you. Afternoon, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board. My name is Heiko Kallenbach. I uh, live in Pine Ridge and I'm chairman of your Aviation Advisory Board. Um, I gotta say, this board looks very, very different than, uh, than the one I addressed <laughs> last year. If uh, Mr. Kennard, uh, Commissioner Kennard were here, I'd make a joke at his, uh, at his expense and say that uh, it reminds me of one of the guys on the Fox News Channel program, uh, um, Outnumbered. And <laughs> <laughs> I wish him all the best of luck. Uh, Commissioner Bays and uh, Finnegan, congratulations on your election. Thank you so much for being willing to step up and uh, work for uh, on behalf of the people of Citrus County. And uh, Madam Chairwoman, I, uh, we, we all look forward to this board working together over the next uh, couple of years to uh, further, further all of our interests. Um, I had the honor this past weekend of attending the Celebration of Life for Captain Tom Davis, at, uh, which was held at the Crystal River Airport. And I just want to say what a wonderful, wonderful program his family put together. This man was, uh, was incredible, made incredible impact on our aviation in our community. And quite frankly, we might not even have an airport in Citrus County were it not for him. The, uh, the, whole, the whole piece was, was, was poignant, it was lovely, it was funny at times. We were treated to uh, the beautiful voice of Miss Angela Vick, singing several a cappella hymns. Uh, Commissioner Davis, his daughter, gave a very, very heartfelt eulogy with which, uh, which she began with an apology to her dad for all this hoopla, which he would not have put up with in any way, shape, or form. And uh, by the time we got to the uh, 21 gun salute and the uh, uh, rendition of taps on a lone bugle, I don't, I don't know that there was a dry eye in the house. It was a beautiful, beautiful tribute. And uh, I think Captain Davis himself would have rolled his eyes and said, come on, folks. I was just a guy trying to make a living. Get over it and let's move on. So rest in peace, my friend. Um, in closing, I would just like to say that uh, as, uh, as a chairman of the Aviation Advisory Board, I know that you will be considering the uh, appointment to, to the vacancies, the three vacancies we have. And it's my understanding, unless something has changed, that uh, <coughs> District 2, there was no applicant. And therefore, we may not, in fact, be able to fill that seat today. Uh, as such, assuming that's correct, um, I uh, respectfully uh, request that you reopen the window for applications for District 2 for the Aviation Advisory Board, making it clear that you are looking for somebody that resides in one of those communities. We uh, look forward to the coming term and uh, would like to very much see that all communities in Citrus County are equally represented. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker. Okay, at this time, I'm going to close open to the public. Commissioners, would you like to make any comments? Who would like to start, if you are? Okay, Commissioner Davis. Start with the end. Um, thank you, Heiko. I really appreciate it. Appreciate everybody who came out. Uh, it was a beautiful ceremony, and yes, he would have been quite upset <laughs> with the hoopla. In any event, um, Mr. Benson, uh, Mr. Cheek is in the audience. I don't know if my fellow commissioners want him to come up and address it, but I would say that we are we are absorbing a majority of the cost. There is a, a much larger cost that you're not even seeing on that. However, um, my empathet my incredibly empathetic answer is that this has been more chaotic than usual on what your answers you're getting because we thought we had lost a grant and then through and then please I hope it hasn't been taken. It's still good. Okay, I'm getting the thumbs up. Um, through the tireless efforts of staff, we did get the grant back, which helped quite a bit. But then we've got the inflation for construction costs. So it's been a little, probably a more chaotic process than usual. Also getting the nod from Mr. Cheek. Um, and he does give estimates with an eye to worst case. So he gives you happy surprises in the end. They never want to give bad surprises at the end. But perhaps when everybody's done talking, the chair will ask Mr. Cheek to come up. Um, or not, up to her. Uh, Mr. Hancock, yes, indeed. Um, we, have, we were all children once. Thank you for being empathetic to that. Um, I believe that was a party spot back in the 80s when I was at Crystal River High School. Um, that is on, it sounds like we need possibly code compliance for illegal dumping, but the big portion would be on the sheriff's department where we've added more funding for more deputies. So possibly they'll have the 
staff to actually to address that more effectively. Ms. Beller, um, thank you. Is she still here? Did she leave? I guess she left. Um, she, she sent out a call for all of us to go to the cold weather shelter um, a couple of weeks ago. I went because I have been kind of spearheading this for the commission for the last couple of years with Prosperity Citrus. And I agree with her that we need some sort of um, cogent answer to this issue, not to make it such a great answer that we bring folks from other counties, but to at least take care of our own and try to re um, get as many as, that as possible back into the workforce. I, th I would like to bring that up at the retreat that we have later this month, so stay tuned on that. And I think that's about it. Thank you. Commissioner Finnegan. Thank you. Um, I wanted to thank Vicki Spiller, but she's gone for her service. Mr. Hancock, I'm sensitive to your needs. Um, so maybe just an idea when you call the sheriff's office, instead of at that point asking for a deputy, maybe call the non-emergency line and find out who the lieutenant or captain is um, in charge of your area and get some, maybe a concentrated effort instead of someone at the point, because it sounds like you, you do need additional help and maybe a higher up needs to take care of that. Um, I wanted to address Diana Bolas, um, a couple of things. I agree being sensitive to the needs of our taxpayers. Oddly, you use the example of eggs being $8 because I literally just used that example this morning, said we can't raise taxes right now when eggs are $8. I used the same exact example. But you said something I wanted to clarify when you related it to growth management and your nervousness about that because of taxes. When we have the right growth manager, what that management does is if we get the right businesses in Citrus County, it alleviates some of your tax burden because they're going to be a taxpayer. So if the county is growing correctly, it's actually going to be a help, not a hindrance. That's why we'll get the right professional, that that's what they know how to do. So um, looks like we'll be voting on that today. So in my eyes, help is on the way. Um, let's see. You know, Ms. Watson, I'm not going to address you and Clark Stillwell will kill me for even saying anything. But to the my constituents and to the people of Citrus County, I do feel that I owe it to you. I recused myself of an item that has nothing to do with my role as a county commissioner long in the works before I was elected, should have been done before I was elected, but as everything runs behind with surveys and different things, it just took longer. Um, I feel like your information is incorrect. Um, very, very small portion of what it may look like a lot, but I own it. Um, so I'm not gonna really give that information because I feel like that will be um, settled at the hearing. And as Madam Attorney, said the um, county has a lot of restrictions that anyone um, can go and apply and the county's in approval of, of all of our things. So we'll just see how it turns out next month. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Bays. I think everything has been answered. I appreciate everybody coming out today and happy new year. Well said. Very good. Okay, um, Sabrina Watson. Um, you brought up a few things, uh, the core business services. I will find out about that. I know that any, uh, I'll just use myself. For example, when I go to a chamber lunch, I pay for that personally. So we'll, I'll find out some of your answers for you. I cannot, um, speak to Mo Baird. I didn't hear her say that yesterday, but, um, that would be something that you would take up with with the supervisor of elections. The hyacinths is the, huge, the biggest problem, is what I understood, so that's why I gave you that information. Um, I, I don't know if you've met with Mark from Aquatics, but um, it is Mark, right? I yes. had a little brain. Um, 
he he'd be happy to meet with you and i think that would be a great um avenue for you to get to and get some answers and maybe share what you think because on that situation you and i are in um we're in line in the same same thought process of of our waters and protecting them and and that leads into um barbara Casale. um you brought up a lot of things also, and I appreciate you coming. I'm glad to see your daughter. I'm always, it always makes me warm in my heart to see her and how well you take care of her. And I wish every parent was as good as you are. Um, as a mother, I, I, my heart breaks for children that are neglected. And every time I see her and how happy and well cared for, it, it, it makes me, it, it makes me like you, even though I don't like some of the things you say. <laughs> But I appreciate and respect you. Um, there, there's a lot. You put the oath. Um, we all signed the same oath. Um, you, you know, I didn't really get what you were going to. The renters overspending. We have a budget. We have to follow that budget. It takes many months. Um, it, we start in April. So hopefully you'll be here attending, see how it is. So there's not really a chance to overspend. We only have so much money and it goes to different things. Um, pushing the highways, I was the first commissioner, not with this board, the previous board that said I would not, absolutely did not, uh, would not approve or, or uh, vote for um, these major highways that we do not um, have the benefit of 75, so we should not be having to fix the problems of 75 because we do not get the benefits of 75. So I, I came right out of the gate. You know that. Everybody knows that. Um, um, and, you know, but Florida Department of Highway uh, Transportation, they're going to do what they want to do. We just as citizens have to continue to do what you're doing and push back and let them know, you know, what we want in Citrus County. So I applaud you for that. Um, I don't have any friends I give favors to. Um, so I don't know that. And um, I do my homework. I spend every Saturday and Sunday reading and doing that. So I just, I'm only saying that to you, not to lecture or do anything. I just wanted you to know where I'm coming from. There was something that was said about the roads in Citrus Springs. For two years at the budget, I have said, listen, we can't do worst to first and density because that means my roads in my district that has the most problem, the most citizens, the smallest district, that we have to look at something because if it's worst to first and density, Citrus Springs will never get paved and neither will some streets and Pine Ridge. I fought for it, I pushed for it. The first year, it was um, humbling to say, to sit up here and be told some of the things I was told. But it, if, if I cannot get the support of the board for that, and I didn't, those roads are not gonna get paved. I was told Citrus Springs has the most roads paid because of the MSBU. So we inherited those roads. I've been in office for two years. Those roads have been in that condition for 40, maybe 50 years. So I just, there's a new regime out there and I think it's kind of funny. They're saying that I, I'm, not, I'm not upholding my oath. Okay, well, it takes a board. So um, I suggest at budget time you come and you plead your case and I will be working with you to help you get those roads paved. So that's my soapbox for that. Um, Vicki Spillers left. Mr. Hancock, um, you kind of answered the question. I, I think the idea of calling the non-emergency line and just pushing back and saying I need somebody to get out here. Um, I don't have that number off the top of my head, but, um, seven, two, six, four, four, eight, eight. There you go. I don't know why you know that by heart, uh, but <laughs> work, work with another agency okay. a long time ago. Yeah. So, um, the music and the four by fours and all that, the pollution party and, and that is the, that you need to talk to the property owner and you need to talk to the sheriff's office. And, um, because I wouldn't like that either, but that's, that's where it's at. Uh, we can help with code enforcement and talking to the property owner, but just get us the information. George Benson, I think uh, Commissioner Davis handled, you know, addressed that. Diana, um, listen, that's a million dollar question there. Who's the builder? Um, I would like to ask Mr. Howard if you could get me, if she will give you the address, I would like to see who pull, pulled the permit to build her home. And uh, let's, let's look deeper into that. And then as far as pushing growth, this board 
the county is not pushing growth. The private sector has found us, and they are pushing the growth. The big box stores, that is not us pushing that. When people buy land, corporations buy land, if they buy it and they're allowed to do what they can on that by zoning, then that is what happens. But that being said, we need proper growth management, which we are working with with our new administrator, and making sure that we are planning and preparing for the growth that we will get and will continue to get. And the other caveat, most cities, profitable counties, have a 60-40 business residential tax base. We're flip-flopped. So the, the, the tax burden falls on the homeowner's shoulders. If we continue to get some high quality businesses here, that will take the burden off of us. So don't look at it like, oh, these big businesses are coming or we're asking our friends. I didn't call my friend, Mr. Target and say, hey, build me a Target. You know, it's, it's but that's going to help get the burden off of us. Uh, all of us up here are big taxpayers, property owners way before we were commissioners. And that's probably why all of us are sitting up here because of that very reason of be, being taxpayers here in Citrus County. So um, I appreciate it, but you know, just look into that a little bit more, think about that. I encourage you to keep coming to the meetings and coming when we start our budget process and uh, because citizens need to be involved and maybe one day somebody like you will be sitting up here. So thank you and thank you for coming. Heiko, keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Probably the most I've spoken in a long time. So that being said, we're on E, regular business. We have E1 bids, and it's E1A through G. Ward, how would you like to uh, take this? What would you like to do with this? You want to take it individually or as a group? I can take it as a group. Thank you. Can you make that motion? Sure. Um, Madam Commissioner, I move to approve our regular business, the bids E1 through A through G. A through G, thank you. Thank you. I have a motion from Commissioner Finnegan. I need a second. Second. Commissioner second. Davis. Second, there we go. Is there any public comment on E1 A through G? Seeing none, any bo further board comment? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. That passes 4 0. Thank you. B2 budget transfers. I need a motion to approve budget transfers for utilities, two for utilities, housing has five, supervisor of election and administrative services for fiscal fiscal year 2022-23. I need a motion. Madam yes. Chair, um, motion to approve E2. Thank you. Is there anyone that would like to second that? Second. Seconded by Bayes. Is there any public comment on budget transfers for E2? Seeing none, any other board discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. That passes 4-0. So motion by Davis and seconded by Bayes. Forgot to say that, Madam Clerk. Okay, E3, budget resolutions. Adopt and authorize the budget resolutions. Madam Chair, motion to approve E3. A motion by Commissioner Davis, second. I need a second. Second. By Commissioner Finnegan. Is there any public comment on E3? Seeing none, board discussion, any other? None, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. That passes 4-0. E4, Southwest Florida Water Management District Cooperative Funding Agreement for the quarter three, 2022, I assume, it's not, Finish there. Um, it says Q320. I hear crickets over there. It's 2022. That's correct, 2022. 2022. Okay. 
water sense label irrigation controller and toilet credit incentives. There's an A and a B. Madam Chair, motion to approve E4, A, and B. Commissioner Davis, second. Second. By Commissioner Finnegan. Is there any public comment on E4? Uh, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. That passes 4 0. E5, fiscal year 21, 20, fiscal year 21. Residential resurfacing settlement. Okay, I see. Residential resurfacing settlement agreement and final payment. This is A and I don't see. It just says A. Uh, B and C. A, B, and C. Mine just says A. Madam Chair, motion to approve E5, A, B, and C. Second. Mr. Howard, mine just says A. Okay, we'll get yours. Okay, so that is Commissioner Bays and seconded by Commissioner Davis. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, is there any public comment on E5, A, B, and C? Seeing none, board, is there any other comments? My only comment is I'd like to see B and C. Um, okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. That'll pass 4-0. Okay. E6, agreement for recovery, recovering off-site utility improvement cost. Board? Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve E6. Thank you, Commissioner Finnegan. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. And is there any public comment on E6? Seeing none, board, is there any discussion on E6? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. It passes 4-0. E7, accept offer to purchase sur surplus, surplus land. Um, this is A, B, and A, B, C, D, E, and F. And I, what I understand is that the, the board needs to, I think the really the board needs to give clarification to staff that what we want to do. I understood that if there is a residential surplus land that was up for sale or sold, that that would go to um, residential would go to infrastructure. If there was a commercial piece of property that was sold, that would go to uh, the new animal shelter. That was the previous board. And then there was a little bit of... Um, miscommunication there so um, I, I think that we should need to have the discussion of how we want this to go forward um, from this point do we want to continue that the residential um, sales of surplus land goes to uh, infrastructure and that the commercial land sales go to the new animal shelter board Well, obviously, no one wants to comment because we so need the infrastructure, and yet we need the animal shelter. Mm -hmm. I would say if we had, as a previous board, agreed to, um, we need both. So I'm okay with it still going to infrastructure. Residential. Residential, to infrastructure, yeah. And there is quite a bit more residential. I think that we have very few pieces left for a commercial, if I'm not right. I, th I believe I'm right about that. Madam Chair, may I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. When you say infrastructure, are we talking about utility infrastructure? Are we talking about road infrastructure? What are we talking about? We're talking about infrastructure and what the when that is sold, the, what the staff... I'm, a, I'm asking to define what type of infrastructure. Is it utility infrastructure or is it road infrastructure? Mr. Howard, could we ask... Uh, I know you have your public works here. Yes, if uh, please come forward, Mary. They're talking together, I think, because it could be either or, probably. But you could bring your friends, Mary. Yeah, come well, on, come on down. <laughs> While they're coming up, I can tell you I reviewed the video of this when it last came up when Commissioner Carnahan uh, made the motion. Uh, I can't remember what what the sale was, but it was his motion that the proceeds be infrastructure. And there was a lot of discussion between the board at the time and the former administrator as to what infrastructure meant. And at that meeting, uh, the board left it. I mean, you can watch the video, but to me, the board left it specifically vague as to infrastructure because they did comment that the animal structure is infrastructure. 
animal shelter is infrastructure. And I think it was, it was more, uh, they were trying to leave it vague so that each board could determine, you know, on a case by case basis, which type of infrastructure it wanted to go to. I only say that because I just had the opportunity to recently look at the video. So. And, and Commissioner Bays, that is the reason why we're discussing that, so that we can give the right direction to the staff and they know what to do and how to move forward. Madam Chair. Yes. I would have just liked to know that we would be deciding on this before the meeting. It seems like a surprise and we didn't have any time to look at the history to make a good decision to talk to the good people of Citrus County. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm okay rendering I'm it. I'm not up. understanding what you're saying. I, I'm saying that we didn't know we were going to discuss this. Yeah, to decide where where this money was going. Like you're wanting us to make a decision now. Well, we did not know that was it says, up and coming. It says provide direction on how the proceeds from the sale of the property are to be applied. Okay. Well, we weren't given those two choices, I suppose. So, but it was on the agenda. I, I'm that I'm not okay. Being fresh, I don't understand what you're saying. It, it's fine. I'd love to hear from Ms. Jensen and Mr. Cheek. Mary Jensen, uh, Director of Public Works. That's my understanding as well. It, it's usually left vague, as uh, Denise said, so that we can decide um, the, at the board's pleasure what to do with it. Um, I do know that Ken has a little bit more experience with that um, <laughs> on utilities. <laughs> side. Uh, I would just say we typically don't use these funds for utility projects. Uh, and as I remember, and I think uh, the attorney said it, the way it was addressed was basically it could still be used for the animal shelter, but it could also be used for others for the residential portion of it. So uh, I think that was purposely done that way so that you guys, when a project comes up that you might want to fund, you have the option to use that money either way. We'll take it in utilities if you want to give it to us. <laughs> typically we handle our own. So. And public that works will take it as well. <laughs> <laughs> My only concern was that I, I feel as long as we're spending the revenue on it, because this is a non-reoccurring revenue, then it should be spent in a non-reoccurring revenue fund. Um, enterprise funds, I don't feel that that's an appropriate allocation to take dollars from something that's a one-time fund and make an investment into an enterprise fund or something that's got a fund of its own that's going to generate revenue. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, I concur with Commissioner Bayes entirely, and I think that that was a, a definitely a theme with the last board. It was always, if it's non-recurring funds, it goes to a non-recurring expense because, you know. Um, my feeling is is that it was, it was left vague on purpose back then, but I will also, I've had some other thoughts about it since then. We have various projects that get funding from state sources and so to my mind i like the vagueness of it because if we have a shortfall on a project where we can't get grant funds then that's a appropriate use to put them in that area for example i don't believe we're getting any grants from animal shelter however we are getting a lot of contributions from our citizens just donations so you know that money is going to come in handy to push something over the finish line where it's costs have gone up due to inflation and and not enough is properly budgeted. So I'm comfortable leaving it vague because that money is going to be, is going to come forward on future agendas, is it not? Like we're going to pull money from that fund and use it here. So there's the transparency that we are all looking for, so. Correct. Mr. Howard, or Ms. Lynn, did you have something? I, I did, I, I think, um it's, it sounds like what I'm hearing is staff, the direction or the request was to provide direction from this particular sale. So it sounds like that's consistent with what you all are saying. You want to have the discretion in the future when you sell a piece of surplus property to designate at that time where you want the money to go rather than have a blanket. Anytime we sell anything, it goes to X or Y. Maybe I think that's what I'm hearing. I... I I am fine with it being vague because it comes before us. And then if there's something, you, you know, you get it a week before and you say, hey, I really think that I would like to propose that this goes to this or this project or that. Um, that's why we're discussing this, because I felt like that the board needs to clarify for staff because 
you know, it, it, it is confusing for staff and what direction to go in. And if we keep it residential is going to go, residential sale is going to go through to uh, infrastructure. And then the commercial goes to uh, the new animal shelter. I'm fine with that. And then if it comes forward and, and one of the commissioners decides or would like to discuss it, that's the time to do it. Any other thoughts? I think it would be very helpful as we have these funding sources, if we identify what fund balance this is going to set in and tell us so we have an itemized list and we can kind of tell where the monies are going, coming from and going to, and we have a running number. Like I have no idea right now how much is setting in reserve. I'm clueless. I mean, I can pick through a few things, but it'd be really nice to know that if we have sold surplus properties, how much money do we actually have allocated in the reserves of surplus assets that have been sold off? I, I mean, I just, I think we have got to start, we keep talking about this and my frustration is we're not telling a story we are not telling the public what it costs to do business. And we need to really get into the habit of telling you. I mean, we know that we need $20 million a year to repave our highways to, to be on a 22 year cycle. Where's that money coming from? How do we get there? We have enterprise funds. I mean, I'm, I'm, glad we're there and I'm glad we're getting to the point where we're hiring people in the building department we're getting we're we're restaffing and we're rebuilding this organization but we have got to figure out a way I mean we've got some really big tasks in front of us and we need to know how we're going to pay for these things and where the money's going to come from what's our bonding ca capability what's our bond rate how much can we draw down if we do an MSBU can we bond that we better get very, very, very serious about our budgeting and we better start talking about it sooner rather than later because we've got some big challenges ahead of us. We've got a lot of development coming in. The legislature decided to make a moratorium that you can only have a crack at in impact fees every two years. Well, guess what, folks? We got two years now before we can go after impact fees. The legislature at the state level is dictating how we're going to run our local government body and how we're going to fund it and how we're going to operate. This board, that's what we're charged with. We're charged with how are we going to deliver these services and we need to prioritize the services that we're going to deliver. We've laid roads down. You build a house, I guarantee you, you're gonna take care of your house. If it needs a roof, you're gonna put it on there. You're not gonna wait till it leaks or falls in. We've put roads down in this county, it's time to repave them and we need to figure out how we're going to do it. I'm very passionate about this. I'm very passionate when it comes to the budget. We need direction and we need as a board to set the policy on where we're going with this because we've got, we are way behind the eight ball. So I'm going to stop there, but I, it, to me, this is important. We have got to talk about our budget and we have got to be serious about it. Well, Commissioner Bays, I do not disagree with you, but I need to bring you back to this issue because this is your opportunity because I know those ideas are up there in that head of yours. What would you like to see with the surplus property? How would you like us to handle it? Because it has been vague. We can continue to be vague or we can give clear direction to the staff. I am fine with it being vague. I would just like to know in the future when these things come before the board, where, where does that money get planted inside our budget? Well, and I do know that with a new administrator, I've been working with that because I said I would like to see a little bit more of the budget impact and the funding source. And um, Aaron is working on that. So you're, yeah, I, you're a little bit, you're, you're right there with what we're discussing. And I agree with you. But are you, are you good with E7, A, B, C, D, E, and F yes, right now yes, as, as it is? Commissioner Finnegan? 
Yes, I'm good with that. Just to Commissioner Bayes' point, I understand what she's saying because this is $75,000, but if we saw the bucket of what else is there, do we need it? Do we need to add it to this because we have a project or, you know, you're talking animal Absolutely. shelter or do we put it under there? That's that's Absolutely. what we're saying. It's a difficult decision to make. It sounds like from what I'm hearing from staff, if we say infrastructure, that's great. And if we want to use it as an animal shelter because that's infrastructure, we could do both. So that seems like our mm -hmm. smartest move today. I won't. Um Say I won't repeat what Commissioner Bay said, but that's something that I've been pounding on about residential road resurfacing. So we've got to get that done. Um, perhaps so we we could do something, and I don't want to create extra work or extra complexity to our budget. But we have the Duke Energy Duke Energy Fund, which we keep a running total on, and when we have a big project that we need funds for, we sweep it out of there. Could we not have a surplus asset fund where we have sold things goes into the fund and we have a running tally of it which provides the transparency then we have a big need because a lot of these things that we're selling are like seven thousand a pop they're not huge amounts of money but when it all goes into one fund then it can make a substantial impact at a time of need and for you know it could be swept into residential road resurfacing for example um but that's just my two cents worth, and yeah, I'm think, fine with it as it is. Okay, so to, just throwing out ideas to kind of make sure that we've got this all put in a nice, neat box. Uh, we're going to keep the surplus land. Right. If residential, it's going to go to infrastructure. Uh, commercial a surplus will go to new shelter, the animal shelter. But to give, if you could give staff um, that we would like to see another box on here that says okay the this sale of this is going to make this um this account be at this amount because we're i think we all are in agreement that we're we're only seeing the money part of the sale that day and we would like to see the sale the the account for the you know the running year and um but we're getting there i know this is why we're having the discussion this is why it says you know provide direction to staff because it's important that us as a board um give clear direction to staff so um is there anything yeah, you would I'd like to add a, to that it's a new day new board um, yeah. so that's important hope is not a plan and you're gonna hear me say the f-bomb a lot but mm -hmm. it's funding uh, so all these things you're talking about are important that we move this county forward, but it, it's gonna take a collective board unified to do that. Staff's asked for direction. It's helping me with direction because I'm going back looking at other boards, but it's a new day for Citrus moving forward. So that's important that we actually get clear direction, but all these comments are great. We will take them back and continue to improve upon the documentation that you're getting. So we hear you loud and clear. Yeah, and just so this board knows, this is exactly the the last two meetings, uh, This, especially the last briefing we uh, the you know Aaron we discussed yes. how do we get this on here because you only have so much room and so she's working on that that's why it's not on here right now so our, our staff and I thank you for all the hard work you do mm -hmm. and I appreciate it but um, I'm glad to see that they they have the same mindset as I do about we want to see the show me the money show me the money so absolutely thank you Okay, so all that being said, um, I need a motion. Did we get a motion for this? I need a motion for E7, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Madam so Chair, okay. Motion to approve E7, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Davis and second by Commissioner Bates. Yes, Thank you. And is there any public comment? Come on, guys. Okay, see none. Any other board discussion? No, ma'am. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? E7, A, B, C, D, and F passes 4-0. Thank you. Thank you, board. E8, Citrus Springs Civic Association Resolution Lease Agreement, Citrus Springs Community Center. And this is A and B. Board? And C. There's a C, too. Um, Madam Mr. Chair, Howard? motion to approve E8, A, B, and C. Okay. Second. E8. There we go. Okay, yeah, there's my C. A, and that was uh, Davis and Commissioner Bays, right? Bays first. Bays and Commissioner Davis. Okay, thank you. Is there any public comment on E8, A, B, and C? You guys missed me while I was on my birthday cruise. I know you did. So um, 
I want to say thanks to Denise. I know that she worked really hard, and I was up here complaining a lot last year about these uh, leases. And this is a, a huge, huge step from a dollar a year to $218 a month. It is a huge step. But having said that, unfortunately, um, I'm going to say, is it really enough? I mean, is it a big enough step yet? And, and, and I'm going to preface that with a couple of things. Last year, one of the things that I talked about was um, an organization with almost a million dollars in annual receipts and almost a million dollars in the bank. Um, I would like to see us um, add some kind of qualifications for these leases. Citrus Springs Civic Association, for example, is planning some barbecues that they're going to be paying for for all of the people in their community because they have six figures in the bank. And they got a lease for $218 a month. I'm not trying to pick on Citrus Springs. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm attempting to pick on everyone that we, the people, have to pay for their rent. So um, just a thought, and again, you know, just to let the public know, I would really uh, hope that we could take a better, not a better, I don't want to use the word better, uh, another look at these leases and maybe add some kinds of qualifications for the organizations that are actually getting these leases. I, unfortunately, will not be able to attend their free barbecue as I do not live in their neighborhood. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Seeing none. Further board Madam discussion? Chair? Yes. Is the barbecue being held at the Citrus Springs Community oh, I Center? Know. I don't know when they're holding it. I just oh. know they're but are they, if they have, if they use that facility, they're required to rent it? Yes. Okay. They're only renting, this only is the office area that right. they rent, but. Yes, they would have a standard facilities use agreement. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. And they do have a six-figure bank account. So I am I'm appreciate that being said. Thank you. Any other board comment? Okay, all in favor say aye for E8, A, aye. B, and C. Aye. 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 Nay. Opposed? None. See none. It passes 4-0. Thank you. E9. Accept convenience of 100-foot by 90-foot metal airport hangar from Crystal Motorsports, LLC, Crystal River Airport, A, B, and C. And I believe this is a hangar that the they built themselves. Yes. Motion to approve E9, A, B, and C. Right. Second. Finnegan. Thank you. I have a motion by Commissioner Davis, second by Commissioner Finnegan. Any public comment on E9, A, B, and C? Seeing none, board, any other further discussion? Madam hmm? Chair? Yes? I think someone might have said convenience. It's a conveyance. Oh, so it it's is a, a it's, conveyance. Sorry. That's okay. It's just a legal it's except a conveyance, sale. Except conveyance of a 100-foot by 90-foot metal airport hangar. Thank you. Thank you. Board, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. That passes 4-0. Thank you. Move along. E10, Core Civic Contract Monitoring Update for November 2022. Madam Chair, I'll move to approve E10. Second. Is there any public comment? Sabrina Watson, Lacanto. Um, last month, Commissioner Bays brought up, um, brought this up, and, and, and here we are again. We're going to find this company $112,500 for their, um, I don't know if poor job is the right word or not, but um, I, I, this just goes on month and month and month and month and month and month for the, for the two and a half years I've been hanging around, and I'm curious, uh, questions again to add for the at the public's edification, is there, are there other companies? I mean, is there a reason why we're saddled with one that we find every single month? Um, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment on E10? Can we have the administrator address it? See none. Um, Mr. Howard. Yeah, we are actually working with uh, 
we are actually working with them, and I think we got a meeting actually scheduled possibly tomorrow. So I think there's there's an opportunity for I think a future resolution uh, to this. But uh, of course, the contract is the contract now. Um, obviously, that'll require modifications, amendments, and things like that. So we're working with them currently on that. But I think we have an opportunity to to do some improvement as we move forward, and looking forward to working with them continue to do that. So we'll report that back. Uh, we hope soon. Ms. Watson, um, I I hear you loud and clear. I have um, spent several hours on this between working with them and the staff, and we are. I do want to see a resolution to this, and I think we were making some satisfactory headway, and we're getting there. So thank you, Board Commissioner Davis. I was actually going to say something similar to Commissioner Bay, so she already covered it. <laughs> yes. Oh, the only thing I would say, I, I, I appreciate uh, Ms. Watson's enthusiasm on the issue. She said two and a half years. Just so we haven't, they have not been receiving this for two and a half years. Uh, I mean, there's been issues, and she's been coming for two and a half years. But the, uh, the assessments haven't been going on for two and a half years. I want to think it's more like a year. I think since I, August. Not August. I think it was August, July or August. Yeah. Six, maybe six months. Almost a Almost year? Almost a year, yeah. Almost a year. And uh, all I would say is, you know, we have been working on this where there are, uh, let me tell you, core civic has come leaps and bounds. But there is some there are contract issues, uh, non-performance fines, and it is a different situation. So I know that I uh, just heard that Commissioner Bays is, has been working very hard on it. Um, you know, my only thought, and you know, and it's kind of a moot point, but is to suspend the fines until we get this contract or the verbiage correct, so that they don't—they're not caught on this hamster wheel. Um, that's the only thing I would throw out there. But again, it's at the board's discretion what they want to do. Madam Chair. Yes. I will make the comment since it is a little bit different than what Commissioner Bay said. I know it's been two months since the new board was seated, so it seems like we're at a standstill, not addressing some of these things, but that's at a very odd time of year when we are seated. This is literally our third real meeting, and it takes time, and with a new administrator and new staff coming on board, um, there's a lot of energy behind the scenes right now. We are going to get a lot of things done on this board. We really are, But stay, so stay tuned and appreciate you being the squeaky wheel. Sometimes, not I always. I don't know about Sometimes. That. <laughs> okay. So, any other board comments? I, I I see I see some some light back there behind you. And are you holding back, Commissioner Bays? No. <laughs> okay. So that I being something to say, I'll say it. <laughs> uh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so that being said, E10 um, board, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. That passes four zero. E11, release of retainage ITB 21-146. This is a SCOP project, A, B, and C, and it's a release of retainage for superior asphalt. Board, what is Madam your pleasure? Madam Chair, motion to approve E12, A, B, and C. I've got a motion by Commissioner Davis. I'm looking for a second. Second. I Chair. think it's E11. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. What did I say? Oh. oh, I did. Um, e11, my apologies. E11, A, B, and C. E11, e, uh, E11, A, B, and C. Thank you, Commissioner. Second. Thank you, Commissioner <laughs> Finnegan. Any public comment on E11, A, B, and C? Seeing none. Any board discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. It passes 4-0. Moving along, E-12, release of retainage, ITB 21-148, also SCOP, which I love, Superior Asphalt, uh, E-12, A, B, and C. Board? Madam Chair, I will move to approve E-12, A, B, and C. Thank you, Commissioner Second. Finnegan. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Any public comment? Seeing none. Are there any other board discussions? Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. That passes 4-0. E-13, Election Security Enhancement Grant for 
2023 approve the application for the election security enhancement grant board oh. go ahead i'll move to approve e13 thank you commissioner finnegan Second. thank you commissioner davis is there any public comment and it is a grant uh, would you please approach the podium and give us your name again? Thank you. John Hancock in the Crystal River. What is this grant for? I mean, I see the grant here, but what is the grant going to cover? Equipment, hiring people, what? Um, I think I have the right answer for that if I remember it correctly. Okay, are you, are you done? Is that your only question? Yes. Okay, thank you. She'll address it. Thank you. And John Hancock is your real name? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask for it later. I was about to say, You're how many John times Hancock. have you been asked uh -huh. that? If memory serves, we were all asked to meet separately with a supervisor of elections, and there's purposefully not a lot of detail in this because of security. Cybersecurity, you don't tell... You don't tell bad people what you're planning to do because then you can breach the defenses, right? That's correct. That Thank so. you. Well done. Is, that, is that your memory too? Well yes. done. Thank you. I don't know how I remember it after a month I've had, but Thank yeah. you. Any other board discussion on E13? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. That passes 4-0. E14, American Rescue Plan, also known as ARPA, a project list update. Motion to, oh. We're providing direction to staff regarding projects. Now, this is what went before delegation yesterday, correct? This is actually just, no, this is actually uh, previously the board identified where these funds would be spent. Um, we were just asked to bring this before the board uh, just to take another look at it. Oh, Staff's I'm, available yes. to, yeah. uh, to have input. This is something if you wanted to consider it at another moment, another time strategic planning session, whatever your pleasure of this board is, but this is just bringing it forward again with what a past board had approved. So this Matt, is our opportunity, yes, if Madam I may. Chair, I would like to pull this item for discussion at our board retreat on the 25th. Is uh, the board okay with that? Do you, yes, I get with that? Is, absolutely. I thank you very much. I was going to say the same thing. Uh, so if, uh, do I need to make a motion to table this or pull this? I think it's just a direction to staff to bring this back at the retreat. And that's your motion, Commissioner Bates. Yes, Can I get a second? Second. Okay. Is there any public comment on this? Seeing none, board all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 4-0. This will be at our retreat discussion. Very good. I like how you think. Okay. We are now at E15, an additional item. Betts Farm Property Discussion and Direction. And if I may step out on this first, I know I'm the chairman, but I would just want to say that um, I am going to support an extension. Um, this, we are heading into a possible recession, and I would encourage this land being sold at the price that it was offered. And um, you know, there's discussion and direction for, for more options, but I, I'm going to suggest that we uh, extend extend uh, this, um, what are they asking for? 6.6. .6. No, no, what are they asking for time to July? What wait, are they, wait. Other three months. Three months. Three months. Okay, so that, that would be what I'm gonna support. Uh, but again, board, would you like to say anything? Yes, I would like some backup history to this. This was done prior to me coming on the board. I would like to know, um, has anybody done a market analysis on it to tell us potentially, I mean, if they end up pulling out, I understand we've got some money left on the table, but what have we lost in market value? And has anybody done any comparatives on this? Mr. Howard? Uh, we, can bring that, we can bring that information back. Well, I'm not prepared to vote on anything yeah. until I know I that answer. Yeah. Then. So um, you need that before you can agree to give them Absolutely. an extension because their extension has run Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. I did notice in our backup information, um, if it's helpful to Commissioner Bays, I mean, it does have the appraised well, value at the time in there, and they, you know, they bid considerably more money. So knowing the changes in the market, I would be inclined to give them the extension 
My only question, maybe a little bit of a rub, is they don't want the agreed upon penalty for that. I believe it's $20,000, $25,000 per month um, because they have a conceptual um, permit and, and all of that thinking that that would be a value. But if we were left with this property, that's really not going to mean a lot to another buyer that would maybe buy that property and use it for something different. So I don't know that I would want to waive that monthly stipend that they should be paying as Commissioner Bays had said, you know, it's sitting off the market. And um, so I would be open to extending it, but I would like that $25,000 per month as they agreed to, to be paid to Citrus County. Uh, well, now I, from what I understand, what they're searching for and the permits they're and land use that if they did not settle this, that does go to the to the county, and that is that does have a, a value to it, and swift mud and how you can use that property that definitely has a tangible value. Is it? Uh, did you want? Yes. Okay. So if you uh, just a little bit of background, so they put initially put up a hundred thousand dollars earnest money deposit. That was a refundable deposit of a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, they came in for the extension because they didn't. They needed to extend their due diligence period. The board at the time said, "Okay, we'll agree to extend the due diligence period. However, uh, for each month, you're going to uh, a portion of your non-refundable or your refundable deposit is going to become non-refundable. So they have exhausted all of the one hundred thousand dollar deposit." Um, he, they are offering in the letter that they are going to do this conceptual plan to help their investors become uh, comfortable with what they are doing. But I think what Commissioner Finnegan is saying is that the conceptual plan that they are going to get the permit on might look so like something completely different to a new person. So they would have to go back to Swift Mud with the new plan. So uh, I, I don't believe that the conceptual plan will, could have a value unless somebody was going to do the exact same thing. Uh, so uh, I would encourage you to to consider, uh, you know, why the penalty, if you want to call it a penalty, was put in place, and whether or not the re the policy reasons for that penalty, if those policy reasons still exist. They, ex I mean, this contract's basically expired. It expired at the end of December, so there really is no contract. You would be resurrecting a, uh, an expired contract. Um, and, and I don't know what value that would have to a potential new buyer. Well, since I guess I don't have to say Madam Chair, since I guess I am temporarily, as a reminder to the audience, we do have speakers in the back, so she's hearing everything. Um, I had to struggle with this a little bit in, when I first heard about it, but I too would support giving the extension because I do know the history and it was uh, purchased at a very... Uh, a pretty generous offer given current marking market conditions at the time the market is um, certainly not still ascending for any properties um, or very few and I do think I'm not a real estate professional but I do think a conceptual permit going through swift mud has at least some residual value because you kind of have an idea there's a lot of wetlands on that property and you would have some idea as a developer, what Swift Mud is okay with, even if you're going to revise the ultimate um, uh, conceptual permit. So, if that's forty thousand, and our normal um, penalty would be twenty five thousand a month at most, perhaps we could put in a ten thousand dollar a month. You know, but uh, I'm comfortable giving them a three month extension at either zero or ten ten thousand a month. Would you go higher than ten? I think he's put a lot of skin in this game already, and I think I'd really he's he's developed some helped develop some really nice things, and so I'd like to see him succeed, because um, I think we got a, a very fair price for it to begin with. If it sells, if it goes it, through, yeah, yeah, if it goes through, um, we've gotten a very good price for it. So, but I did put some thought into it, and and obviously I did know the history because. We went around this a long time. <laughs> so Thank you. I agree with you. I think that uh, I would rather encourage a business um, to, and he has, he's very aware of environmental issues. He's an engineer. I, I am on the mindset 
of extending this for three months and giving him that chance this and and then encouraging this to the sale to go through and um and otherwise the vultures are going to start swarming and they're there waiting in the wings and i i'm just i'm i would i in fact i'll do a motion to extend this contract uh three months um i'm gonna I'll I'm going to say um, with his $40,000 additional, the hundred, I'm just going to say I would extend this three months and encourage him to get this um, finished up in the next three months without the $25,000 additional uh, deposit. Second. And Madam Chair, may I make one other comment to the commissioners that weren't on there? Some of the other applicants were not necessarily the kind of applicant that we want in this county. And if we ended up having to take a purchase from to do right by our citizens and sell property that is for sale, if the only ones that are out there, somebody, everybody keeps talking about we want the growth that we, good growth, we don't want bad growth. There's a cautionary tale in there. Thank you. Well, Madam Chair, I will not support that. I think that, I mean, you're moving almost into one year at that point by the time you make okay. this three months so i'm not going to support it okay would you support anything if the penalty for three months if it was more like fifteen or twenty thousand dollars a month to encourage him to get in this property as quickly as possible well again i mean he signed this contract on august last year and we've provided these extensions going along i mean as long as we continue to do this and there's no penalty to that he has there's no motivation for him to continue I so I, I think that is just a ridiculous place for us to be. I think um, so. Yeah. I, I, you know, I absolutely number one think he should be required to put another hundred thousand in escrow and still pay a twenty five thousand dollar month fine. I think if uh, are you are you done? Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, this has been everybody knows this to get things done to get permits done to get things we are in a different time and august isn't that long i've been working on trying to get a shelter plans for two and a half years so i i think that we are being um the issue is is that I, you purchase you a piece to, of property i have the floor commissioner mays I am going to be of the mindset of encouraging. He's putting an additional 40000 in there. If, if let's take a vote on the motion. There was a motion and a second on the floor. So uh, if it doesn't pass, then, then we can go on. But all in favor of uh, the motion that I made to extend this three months. I had a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. Okay, so we're at 2-2. Two, two. So... Do we call Kamala Harrison to do the, the swing fails. vote? The motion fails. The motion at a 2-2, two, two, it fails. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I think that's a tie. Um, but <laughs> Okay, so that motion failed. Would anybody else like to make a motion? Commissioner Bates, do you want to make a motion? I'm, I'm willing. Well, again... When somebody signs a contract, I mean, they should know up front whether this piece of property meets their needs. I mean, they know that going into it. So I'm of the mindset that when you sign this and we've provided an extension, now is the time that, you know, this is lost income to us. Um, there's potentially other buyers. So I think there needs, to, I think he needs to put another 100,000 in escrow. And if he wants it, then he'll pay the, if he wants an extension for three months, then there's $25,000 a month fine for the, for each month. That's my motion. I'll second. So could, would you like to repeat that motion? My motion is to extend the contract for three months with an additional $100,000 in escrow and a $25,000 per month fine for every month he doesn't close. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Bays, a second by Commissioner Favor uh, Finnegan. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Nay. 2-2. Two, two. We, we can try it one more time. Yes, ma'am. Please do. <laughs> I will make a motion to extend this contract 
um, with $60,000 in escrow, $20,000 a month until they close. Second, $20,000 a month penalty. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So 60 plus 20 a month. Per, for the per three months, Six, sixty thousand. If he pays twenty thousand a month, that will be the non-refundable escrow that he would put in at the beginning if he takes all three months. So you're not saying sixty plus twenty and twenty. Correct. You're Six, saying twenty. So oh. you're saying twenty thousand dollars a month. Right. Oh, so no, no, nothing additional in escrow. Well, I think that he should put that money in up front, and then as he did before with the hundred thousand, and then the county kept twenty five thousand a month of that non refundable. So if he puts in another sixty thousand dollars, and twenty thousand a month would be non refundable as he's not closing. If he feels like he can close in three months, that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, if we're not asking for anything additional in escrow, then I'm not going to support it. I'll second it. But I'm not. I'm not necessarily supporting that. Just okay. for discussion. So you're okay. saying twenty thousand dollars a month for fines, so that you know he can. But pay the sixty thousand up front. If he closed in two months, then he'd get twenty thousand dollars refundable. Commissioner Davis. I'm not real. I don't. I can't support it the way it's it's done. Um, if it comes down some, I would support it, but. Um, he had a partner, a developer, Lennar Homes, that was going to develop it. And just to be clear, from what I understand, Lennar is not spooked by this property. In particular, Lennar is pulled back in a lot of places. But we are still building homes in Florida because we still have a pretty, pretty stiff current of new residents coming into Florida every single day. So I would assume, hope, that he is going to find a quality partner uh, developer partner to develop it. So um, I just feel like he's already put a lot of skin in the game and just a, a little bit of goodwill would be a good thing. So like I said, I'm more on the 10,000 a month level. And I, I could, I will, I will support a $10,000, um, a $10,000 a month. Can I ask you a question? If we moved ahead with that and that was supported, in three months, if we have to extend again, then what? Just thinking towards the future. Well, I think we have to address that in three months, but what we're saying is you got three months. And hopefully these permits that he has applied for will move along during the first month. Um, but I, twenty thousand, the sixty thousand. I, I, he has a lot of skin in the game, and this is somebody that I personally think would benefit our community. He is respectful of the environment. He, he is not going to just you know rape and pillage that land, and it's very important. And it's and uh, yes, he knew the consequences. But I again want to encourage businesses and the proper businesses. That's what we talk about so much: encouraging the proper businesses coming here. So I, I'm just curious if it would make it more palatable to Commissioner Bays. Um, if you all want to do $10,000 a month, what if it was $30,000 up front and no matter when he closed within that three months, the county still gets the $30,000 for the extension? If it, may I? About, just for point of clarification. You're saying that you're talking about escrow though. You don't wouldn't get to just non refundable thirty thousand dollars, and he has up to three months for the contract. But I think es need escrow goes to the purchase price, yeah. so it's not the thirty thousand would go to the purchase price. But if he backs out, then it's ten thousand a month. <coughs> That's how the escrow would work. It's not just a fee. It's see what I'm saying, Madam so. Chair, uh, Madam Attorney. I'm going to have to help the realtor draft this, so I want to make sure I'm clear on how we're doing this. So what I'm understanding, the way it's written now is there's $100,000 in escrow. We got, that's at the time we signed the contract. Each month that it didn't close, the penalty was to make 25000 of that 100 non-refundable. The way I understand the motion on the floor is we're going to have a $60,000 upfront escrow deposit 
which is refundable, except that for each month that he doesn't close up to three months, he's penalized $10,000 or $20,000 is the current motion. Mm, it's 30. Current no, motion it's is 20. 30. No, is the it? current it's motion oh, but is. She was talking about making the 30. Okay. If, yes. if, if I'm wrong, I'm hoping the you're, you're, motion. What is on the floor correct. is what you're saying okay. is correct. So $60,000 escrow deposit will be uh, added to his escrow, and each month, Twenty thousand will become non-refundable. So if he closes in two months, then only um, t uh, forty thousand will be non-refundable. Okay, that, that was the motion. the motion on the floor. Yes, but I didn't know how that was sitting with Commissioner Bays and in the spirit of trying to uh, bring everybody together. I mean, the contract's dead, so really we could rewrite it. I mean, if we wanted to add thirty thousand dollars to the purchase price. I wasn't done. Oh, sorry. So, so that's the motion on the floor. So what I understand the negotiation on the floor is that what if we changed it to a deposit, an additional earnest money deposit of $30,000, and then each month $10,000 becomes non-refundable? That's the way I understand the discussion y'all are having. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. If I was out buying a $6.5 million house, <laughs> this would never happen. You wouldn't let it happen if it was your property and somebody made an offer on it and it was contingent and just take $100,000 and they keep extending the contract. Yeah, but we're not talking about a house. I understand. But he made a contract on a piece of property that he wanted to develop. That's He's in the business to do that. We should not be in the business to sit around and wait for him to figure out if his permits work out for him. Because what if at the end of the day he goes... Thank you very much. It's only cost me a hundred grand but to the, tie this property up for eight months, twelve months. I think that is a very unreasonable offer that that we are allowing somebody to get away with, and I think you're setting a precedence. If you make a contract to to close on a piece of property at a certain time, I think we've given an additional three months. But now, I mean, it's time to fish or cut bait. I I hear you, but I don't agree with you. Okay. So um, this this is this property is sat vacant with nobody looking at it for how many years? And you're saying there's you, we're gonna get rid of this contract with the hope that there'll be another one that will come in and, and, and match this contract. And being patient and trying to encourage is not, this is, this is not a home, this is many acres and there's extenuating circumstances. I'm just trying to encourage that this sale get through. Um, that's why I made the motion that I did. Um, Madam Chair? Yes. Ditto. That's Thank all you. I got. You said it perfectly. So we, right now we have the motion of 60,000 in escrow and 20,000 a month per month and and if he could do it in two months he would get 20,000 towards escrow. Um I'm not going to support that cuz I think it's a little high but um you know let's it's on the floor so uh I think we should uh open to the public. We have a motion on the floor. I point to you because I think you might no you two are the only Mr. Hancock might be the only public left. No, I got another one, though. <laughs> don't encourage her. <laughs> don't encourage her. Um, so I don't see anything, Mr. Hancock, nothing from the public. Um, so, board, all in favor of the motion that is on the floor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Say nay. 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 So that passed on three. Okay. Would we like to take another bite at this apple? I'll make the same motion identical to what Commissioner Finnegan said, but do... 10,000 a month or 30,000 in escrow. I will second that. Public comment? Board all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. nay. I guess nay because we didn't have discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, well. I was just, there's been. Wait, should, uh, hello, Madam Attorney. I missed uh, the board discussion. So, so can we stop does she have to redo the motion again then? You're there to help us, so I want some it help. Really quick. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, I think maybe you should have some discussion and you can decide how you want to I'm sorry, I think you should have some discussion and then you can decide how you want to move forward. But as of right now, the motion failed, but maybe two, you can two. resurrect okay. it. So can we try that motion again? Maybe she wants to just talk. Would you like Start. to talk? I just have a question yes. because we've discussed so many things at this point. How how is your motion? I'm probably missing something. How is your mo this motion different from the last one that you made? Half the money from the one you made because no. you, didn't you make a motion for ten thousand dollars before? Or was that no? Just that discussion? was just discussion because um, so you had made the motion for sixty, yes, twenty thousand a month, and I said basically what you said, only half of that, thirty thousand, ten thousand a month. She duplicated that it would be thirty thousand in escrow, ten thousand a month, and then if he closed in two months, he get ten thousand dollars back. Correct. Sorry to throw another wrinkle in this, but make sure uh, in the motion that it, it's got to close on or before the three the months, three six, the ninetieth day, or 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 some time limit that y'all want. The ninetieth day from from when from what starting point? Today. today or some other date that y'all you know if you want to give him 15 days past the 90 days or I, you know I think he asked for three months yeah he said closing date or no did he say due diligence there's been so much let's let's due get that straight due diligence period and, and closing, closing date, date. I would put a date in it just so everybody's very clear. Must close on or before the 90th day following the date of this vote. How long does he have to get the county the six, the $30,000 in additional escrow? Is that like five days or? Yeah. What do y'all think? 10 days? Yeah, five days? Money by, um, with money delivered by, to the county by 10, ten, day, ten, ten days. days. 10 days. 10 Ten business, calendar or business, business days? days? Ten business days, and then this expires. We can give them an extra five days to say April 15th, tax day. Oh. <laughs> Did you do the math? Didn't I? No, it I, wasn't I didn't nine. Do the math. No, he was asking for three months. So January 10th would be April 10th, and I just said you can make it April 15th. Okay, so do you have anything more you would like to discuss? Chair? Yes. There is not a motion on the floor right now. Okay. This is just so discussion. Four, four motions have already been made to. I have four motions. Failed. Okay. Yeah, two, 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 okay. two, one, three. That's what I got. I guess the question is on the last motion, could you support that now that we've discussed it? Uh, I'll support it, but. This guy better close in 90 days. I mean, okay. really. Do you hear Are that? Are we amending <laughs> this motion to the discussion you just had? Because okay. there is yes, not a, They're going to make another motion. There's the not dates. a motion on the floor. Okay. So Do we need a motion on it? the floor. Okay. So uh, buyer is to deliver 30000 by 10 business days from now, which would that be the 24th? Let this January 24th. Um, and to push the new extension, um, the uh, expiration date would be April 15th, and it's 30000 and 10000 becomes non-refundable each month. He does not close. Is there a second? I will second that. Okay, any... Public comment. This is pretty, pretty interesting. Okay, seeing none, any other board discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion on the floor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. That passes 3 1. Hallelujah. And staff has the proper direction, correct? Mr. Howard, thank we you. We got it. Okay, <laughs> item F. County Administrator update on the list. Any completions or deletions, uh, Number please. four, uh, staff has asked to remove that uh, based on the cost. It's about a $25 million impact. Uh, that was based on 2017. They've asked to remove that item. Pleasure of the board. Number four. Number four. I would concur. 
Um, also, item number nine has been completed. Um, staff is asked to remove that item as well. Yeah, it says completed on there, okay. And item number 13, um, although uh, the language with the issue, uh, there has been one-on-one -on -one meetings that have been held uh, with each of you to discuss aquatics. Uh, so staff has asked to remove that item as well. Very good. Thank you. Okay, board. Um, I am looking for direction on item F1. I'll move, move to approval approve. as presented. And well, with the exceptions of the administrator, just four, nine, and twelve. Thirteen. Um, Thirteen. Thirteen. Be removed. Mm -hmm. Thirteen. Second. Thank you. Um, is there any? Don't need public comment. Any other board discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. You missed somebody. Public comment. On this one, it doesn't require public comment. It's a no. But you finally had something to say, and we cut you out there. Just make it up at the end. Okay, so that passes 4 0. Okay, uh, G. County Administrator, Mr. Steve Howard, you have the floor. Thank you. So thank you. Um, one of the mission critical leadership positions uh, that needs to be filled is the growth management position. Um, and Mr. Landon is in the audience today with his uh, wife, Julia. So we welcome them to Citrus County. Uh, Mr. Landon has a master's degree in public administration, a bachelor's degree in political science, and he also is a certified planner with the American Planning Association. Um, he also was a director of planning of government services for the Coastal Regional Commission of Georgia which was over 45 local governments that he worked with, uh, as well as he was a director of planning and development for Camden County, Georgia, which I worked with him uh, side by side. Um, and also he was a county planner and MPO transportation planner, um, as well as a county planner in Florida for uh, Nassau County. So uh, we uh, strongly recommend uh, his uh, placement as a growth management director and uh, seek uh, the approval of this board today for his confirmation. And I think he'll do it, be an amazing asset for Citrus um, he's the right fit for Citrus, and he'll do amazing work working with the current team in place as we continue to build uh, Team Citrus. Thank you. Thank you. I, like that team citrus. I like that Team Citrus. Board, I'm looking for a confirmation of Mr. Howard's um, direction. I will make that motion to confirm Eric Landon as our new Growth Management Director, effective January 10th, 2023. Oh. Yeah, that that I think that might be the only mistake. It's not oh. January tenth. It's not today. You start now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess the, the, the it's, it's sorry, too late. Let's me. vote on it. Yeah, we can do that. He's actually already been working for us, um, but he actually will. Con you'll confirm him today, but it'll be the twenty third. I think is when he'll actually make his presence here. He's already actually bought a purchased a home already. Um, so he's um, getting embedded in this community That's quickly. That's what I very said. confident. I, was like, I, like, I like your confidence. Um, I do. I yeah. appreciate that. So okay. So I'll if, second. Thank you. With the amendment of the January 23rd, 2023. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. I Do I need public comment on this? Yes. I think yes. so. I think so, yes. Public yes. comment, Mr. Okay. Seeing none. Sorry to keep calling you out, but now I know your name. <laughs> um, uh, board, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. That passes 4-0. Congratulations, sir. If you would like to come up and speak to us, please. Eric Landon, soon to be resident of Inverness. I, I'm under contract. I haven't yet closed the deal. Um, <laughs> but I'm just excited and grateful for the opportunity to be here, and I'm excited to become part of the community. So thank you very much. How many extensions are you going to ask? Uh, ho hopefully none. <laughs> What's your ask for? <laughs> but, you, be, you behave down there. <laughs> but thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. It. Welcome to Citrus welcome County. Welcome aboard. You're welcome. We might have to get a taller uh, mic microphone there. We'll keep Thank you. Folks. Oh, I'm, I'm making up for it because I'm short. Okay, so I'm adding up. G G two. G2. Mr. G2. Howard. Um, also, I'm very pleased. Uh, the assistant county administrator position has been vacant since June 2021, um, and recommendation is Miss Rodriguez. Um, she holds a master's degree in business administration, a bachelor's degree in healthcare administration. Uh, she currently serves as a community services director, and she's going to do an amazing job. She's already doing that. But I'm just glad to be able to work alongside her. So strongly recommend her appointment today, and I'm looking forward 
uh, to her future with Citrus and working side by side with her as we continue to move Citrus County forward. So ask for your approval today to confirm her appointment. I would love to make that motion, if I may. <laughs> I would like to make a motion to oh, accept <laughs> G2 recommendation from Mr. Howard for Maricel Rodriguez. Second. Thank you. Any public comment? Seeing none. Board, all in favor say aye. Oh, board discussion, excuse me. Yes, I'm happy to support this, but I would also like to hear from Mr. Howard. That's been here now a couple of months, but I'd like to hear observations, um, you know, what you, you know, your management style, what you see, what you think. I, I mean, I, I'd like to hear from you. As I was corrected, they, they told me about the canal. With the, I thought it was crocodiles, but I was told it's alligators. Uh, but as we continue to navigate this county forward, but we do have to move this county into the 21st century. Um, these are important key leadership positions. Um, so it's also important to get the right fit. And as a leadership, I empower, but remove obstacles. Um, so just like the assistant, uh, as we're hiring, you just confirmed today, we're going to work side by side as we move this community forward. So that's important as we continue to focus not only today, but for the future in succession planning. So we want to make sure that we're doing that as well. If we can grow within this organization, I want to do that. I think I've showed you that today as well. But if we can't, sometimes we have to go outside the organization as well. But that's critically important as we move this community forward. But I do think there's a lot of opportunity as we continue moving forward, but it's got to be a unified focused message and strategic planning is going to be a key component of that as we meet in the 25th. That's very important. Um, and hope is not a plan. All these things you're saying up there is important, um, but we got to get it done. We got to get results. And that's what I like to do. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But we do have a lot to do ahead of us. But I think the future is bright. We have a new day in Citrus um, as we continue to lay the foundation. But this is really laying the foundation to move it forward. Um, so that's just a little bit of an observation. We're going to continue to penetrate. Uh, we're going to use a scalpel when we need to use it to be able to get into these departments working collectively. But we have some amazing staff here mm -hmm. every day. I'm seeing that. So I applaud the staff because they keep the county running. Um, so I'm just fortunate to be actually be in this seat here today as we continue to move this county forward as a team. Anything else, Commissioner Mays? Thank you. Commissioner Finnegan? I'm just happy to give my yay vote for such a talented young woman. Thank you. And I, I was trying to beat Commissioner Davis out on the motion and stole it, you know, stole third base from her. But um, I do, I want to amend something. Maricel has been working in this position for since the November, basically. And I would like to amend my motion, Madam Deputy Clerk, that we accept the recommendation uh, for G2 for Assistant County Administrator position, Michelle, Maricel Rodriguez, but effective immediately. Um, yes, I, absolutely. I would like yes. that. If you wouldn't mind amending your second. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So that being said, um, any board discussion on that? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. There better not be. It passes 4 0. Thank you. And, and Ms. Rodriguez, please come forward. Because you know how much she loves to I be know. Out in this front. is my one chance to have her share her wisdom. For I am humble that you are selecting me for the position. It is bittersweet because I leave a a group of community services team members that are doing a fantastic job for um, the county, but I am not going too far, so I just want to thank you for the opportunity. Thank, thank you. you, and congratulations. Very good. G3. Mr. Howard, Legislative Priority List 2023. Yeah, I think each of you got a chance to participate yesterday, which I think was an amazing event. It was my first uh, time seeing that. And I've seen it done different ways, but I thought it was pretty amazing. The community had an opportunity for input. I think the chair did an amazing job uh, presenting. Um, but this is before you today. We've had this in your packet. This is the <coughs> legislative priorities. Um, this is just asking for consensus, but a full vote from this board so we can take this back to the legislators. Um, I know in the packet there was some listing of order, but I don't think that's really, really meaningful the way the order was. Um, but in this packet you have today, it kind of talks about the Inverness Airport Business Industrial Park Phase Two completion project, which I think is critically important for this community to move it forward for economic development opportunity and ensuring that you're not a one-dimensional economy. Um, the Halls River Multi-Use Path Construction Project, the Southwest Regional Water uh, Reclamation Facility Reclaim Water Project, and there's others that are listed as well um, that you have in your packet that we talked about yesterday, but we're asking for board vote on this so we can now send this to the legislators with one unified voice as we move forward this community. Um, seeking out funding appropriately. So thank, thank you. you. Board, any 
comment? Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am, please. Uh, number nine on here is to support the Hernando Citrus MPO transportation initiatives. I'm in full agreement with the entire list. However, I would like to add to that. Um, as I said, as your alternate representative on the MPO, I know that they're getting ready to do their long range transportation planning. And we actually had a presentation by the um, Suncoast Parkway when I was there. Uh, and I raised the question that um, I feel it's very necessary that they take some action on that board to start pinging IP addresses to find out the trajectory of the traffic that's coming off the Suncoast Parkway onto 44 or that's getting on 44. And the reason I say that is um, I have some pretty grave concerns about our overall transportation network in the county. We only have one east-west trajectory that gets us out of this county to 75. And um, we already know that 75 is a problem between the Turnpike and Gainesville. People are going to continue to use that Suncoast Parkway in evacuation situation um, to stay off of 75. They're going to get into our county and we're going to experience some, some pretty horrific, I think, um, traffic congestion that's going to be dumped into our county. It's going to be compounded by the fact that even though the Suncoast Parkway is going to terminate out on 19 at some future date, but that's a high coastal road hazard area that will be shut down problematically. Um, I had a meeting today with uh, uh, Tito from the health department. I think he's got a great, a great ask that we need to put on to the legislative agenda as well which is to have a multi-purpose building because if we have people that are trying to evacuate and they get stuck in our county, we have no place for these people to go. And I've also um, uh, talked with Chief Stevens about you know emergency evacuation with fire rescue and ambulance. So we, we're in some, some pretty serious conditions with how we're going to move traffic in this county with having one east-west connector. Um, people are going to get off on 75. I know I have friends now that have a place up around Macon, Georgia. They're getting off way up above, um, mm -hmm. you know, 121 or sometimes even further north of that and winding their way down to 41, you know, to two and, and maybe 491 to 200. But We've got some really um, high priority levels that I think that we need to look at just to, you know, further segue into that. 44 in downtown Inverness has no capacity. So we're at literally the same situation that the state is on 75. And I think, you know, we need to be able to go to the state. They need to be able to pay for this traffic study to tell us where these people are traversing from and where they're going. And it's per I was appointed by Governor Scott on the I-75. It's being done all the time. So I this is something I highly recommend that we ask the MPO to get on their priority list and that we know where these this traffic is going to and fro. Um, because we've got to come to the table. I mean, we've got roads that need resurfacing and we've got capacity issues. And when we have capacity issues, many times the state is requiring us to come to the table with a 50% match. And I think we've got other issues as um, Mr. Tito said earlier today, you know, about having a multi-purpose shelter in the event that we have an evacuation um, and we need to house people. But this is something I feel very passionate about that we've, we've got to get ahead of this because the state's problem is our problem. No matter how we want to look at it, it this this traffic is our problem. Are, are you done? Yes, ma'am. So, Commissioner Bays, are you saying I don't have the backup material for what is the uh, priority list for the MPO? Um, I I I can pull it from memory, but I I would like to see it. But what you're asking, if I'm hearing you clearly, is you want to ask you want us to ask the MPO to start studying the traffic that we're going to incur just by people trying to get on the parkway? 
Yes, they're going to okay. leave. They're going to stay <clears throat> on the Suncoast Parkway from south and stay off of 75. Mm -hmm. And where's that traffic going? Is it going out to 75? Is it, go is it going to 19 and cutting across up through 121 and back onto 75? Um, people, are they getting off 75 and coming down through Citrus County? Are they getting off at 200 and using um, 491? You know, there's going to be, there's an exit proposed above um, Ocala uh, and a bypass that will go around the rec center and it will dead in out on at the top of the world on 200. That's just going to be another avenue for people to get off of 75 and end up down in our county trying to find their way to mm -hmm. the Suncoast Parkway to get out of congestion. So we, we need to start pinging these IP addresses. We need to know where these people are going. Are, I mean, are they going over to Jacksonville or are they going north up to 10? I mean, where are they going and where are they coming from so that we know internally how we are going to um, prioritize our transportation network? Very good. Commissioner Finnegan, Commissioner Davis, any thoughts? I just had a um, a question for Commissioner Bayes. So it sounds like not to add that to this list, but maybe take it back. I believe you're sitting on the MPO and have them put it on their priority list and then make that a priority that we... It should be part of, of our um, MPO, T or um, Hernando Citrus MPO priority. They're going to do the long range transportation plan, but we need to, to ask and have give them voice. direction to start knowing where this traffic's coming from so we know how to prioritize our transportation network. Because if we don't know where that traffic is coming and going from, we don't know how to prioritize. We don't know if it should be 491 to 200. We don't know if it should be 41 up to 121. We, right now, we're, we're flying blind. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Davis? The only thing I wanna say is that it pretty clearly, um, when you are passionate about being a commissioner and doing a good job you still have strengths and you know areas that you have more specific knowledge in everybody knows i they get tired of hearing me talk about strategic plan strategic plan communications those are my bailiwick i am so thankful to have commissioner bays on the board because she has a passion for um, making sure our transportation is done well and so thank you for that very interested we'll in it. It's just not an area. <laughs> it's not an area that's an expertise for me. So I look, I look forward to your recommendations. And and I do agree. I don't know that there's anything we can change right now for a priority list to legislation because it's going to have to go before the MPO to get on their priority list. Well, that's what I'm asking for you yeah. to make that as part of your priorities to the MPO. And here comes our lobbyist. Yes. Uh, maybe I can yeah. help. Gene McGee, your, your lobbyist. Thank you. Um, the legislative agenda are your instructions to me and the legislators of what you want to accomplish, right? So one of those priorities says that you're going to take all the MPO priorities for transportation projects in the county, and I'm supposed to advocate for the legislature to fund those, and the legislative delegation advocates for them to fund. What Commissioner Bays brings up is a good idea. And so if you added that to the agenda, it's not really a problem. It's not like you're telling me to go get a special member project and take money from general revenue to fund this. It's merely to work with the MPO and the FDOT, who will ultimately fund that study, to do a traffic count study. So I, I don't think there's any harm in adding that to the legislative okay. agenda along with the MPO. Pri Even though it's not an MPO priority yet, what you're really doing is telling me and the legislators that we need to work with FDOT and the MPO to make that a priority in order to tell them that we want to get funding for that study. So it doesn't hurt to put it on the okay. legislative agenda. It's really a formal way to say this is an issue and we'd like you to work on it. So I, I think that's fine. Um, I've talked to Tito about the multi-purpose shelter and it's a good and original and a novel idea. And I also don't mind if you want to add, you know, seek funding to construct a multi-purpose shelter. That's fine. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the sources of funding are, but for you to put on the legislative agenda for me to go try to find out and to work with the legislators, our delegation and the legislature to seek funding to, to get that done, fine. That's good. I mean, that's what the legislative agenda is for. So uh, I don't think there's any and issue Madam at all Chair. with adding those items to the legislative agenda. Madam Thank you, Chair. sir. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Commissioner and, Bays. And Jean, I, I think to the point is, is as you, you know, try to find funding sources, 
I think it's important for the people at the state to know that if we are in an evacuation period, when you take Pinellas, Hillsboro, Pasco, Hernando, and Citrus, we're not only, you know, whatever their population base is, but we know by pinging IP addresses that we know that 50% of our visitors are in a car. Mm -hmm. So if we're, if we're trying to export people or they are exporting out of those high coastal areas and they're on that Suncoast Parkway, it's not just about our residents. It's about other people from across the state that are going to be seeking shelter. Right. So I think, and we right now are for more or less are a cul-de-sac you know, <laughs> where that, that traffic is going to end up. Absolutely. So we, we need to be thinking way ahead of this game on what we're going to do with these people and where we're going to put them in this type of an event. Right. And Mr. McGee, I do want to add something to that. She is absolutely right. Over Christmas, an acquaintance of mine from Sarasota sent me a photo of a billboard and a, a funny plumber, and we all know the billboard, and said, what's happening in Citrus County? And shows this billboard photo. And I said, how do you know about that? And they said, we got off of 75, it's a hot mess, <laughs> and we're going down 44 oh, yeah. and 19. Right. They were heading to Georgia. And I was like, oh, so when you brought that up, She's absolutely right. And if we have this parkway coming through our county, there are going to be unforeseen consequences, both negative and positive. And thank you. And this is why, once again, I'm going to back up what Commissioner Davis said. I'm so thankful for this new board that we have. We, there's so many different strengths that you all bring that um, there, there's not going to be any stopping us. If, if I can say one more thing, I mean, a legislative agenda is great, and you, we kind of were pushed to get that together because of the delegation meeting. At the delegation meeting, all you really have to do are local bills. Everything else okay. is kind of just informational, and they hear you, and they say, okay, that's great. I know about that. <coughs> if tomorrow you wake up and have a great idea that you want me to pursue, you can do that. It doesn't have to be in a formal legislative agenda. Okay. The reason it's nice for the legislators, the three projects you highlighted – commissioner or, or uh, uh, administrator are things that they're going to have to fill out special member projects and request money out of general funds and they don't go through any process other than that and those are the things that they really have to work on really hard that's their credibility that's their you know they have a thimble of influence and we're asking them to go get nine million for this and eight million for that everything else they're going to work on if we wake up and say boy we really need more aquatic you know funding they're going to work on that for us. And, and that didn't have to be part of a legislative agenda for you to tell me we need to, you know, we need some help here. So, you know, the legislative agenda is a formality. It's a, it's a moment in time of what we say we want. And we've done the formal thing by presenting that to the delegation and the legislators know about it. But again, if next week this board decides, man, we really need this help from the state, that's fine. Let me know. We're happy to work on it. I'm happy to communicate that to the legislative delegation and we'll work on it. How so. much time do you need? I mean, the traffic study is pretty easy thing to add well, to our list. Right. But it, but bringing up, I mean, for many months, I've been talking to Mr. Rubio about um, what Commissioner Bays brought up, a multi-purpose building. Mm -hmm. And I mean, what would you need to even try to fight for that, you know, to, so, to so beg we for that money? We have until the middle of February, I think it's February 12th, to actually file a special member project request. If that's where we're going to get the money from, it may be working with an agency to draw money down from an agency in a pot or a trust fund that's already there. I don't know. I haven't really. But you would need a number. You would need a number. You would need. Yeah, but some I'm happy kinda... to meet with Tito and figure out what the parameters of that project are and how much you know what okay. his idea is. Meet with the administrator and we can yeah. flush that out. I think okay. that resiliency money pop possibly is a pot of money that could Absolutely. go very well with that. That's a really good use of that money, and I think you could showcase this type of a project. I think we get the attention of the state. And, and, and resiliency is a great idea because all that money's getting sucked right. down to Miami right. and they're looking for a reason to kind of yep. spend it somewhere else. So yep. if we can give and them a this region, region would be a big deal, I think would be a big opportunity. Yep. And I think tying into what Commissioner Bay said, it's 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 going to be an obvious need for us. Yeah. You know, if we uh, I I'm I love the the cul de sac example. That mm -hmm. is a great example. Everybody can understand that. And um, so that just ties together. So. so closing thought, it's dynamic. It's not static. So you're not, you know, we can add these. And if next week we need to add something else, that's fine too. Commissioner Davis. 
Um, would it make sense to look at having the armory that's currently at the airport co-located with that? My understanding is that they're pretty tight on their footprint there for what they do, and it might be better for them to be located away from the coast, like closer to 589, and that might be a good multi-purpose type facility where I'm, and I'm not, and I'm speaking from a position of ignorance and that I don't know how much of the building they use all the time. I just know that we have gun shows and home shows and things like that all the time. And that might be something that's worth exploring. Well, Madam Chair, that would be a policy decision or way above my pay grade. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Just yeah. a thought. Yeah. Might be worth staff looking into. And I'm not sure, but that's two different departments also. And, mm -hmm. and uh, what we need definitely needs to be in the Central Ridge higher area. So um, can't speak to that, but mm -hmm. that is something that I think, you know, we all. I'll get to work on that one. Very good. Okay. Thank you. So uh, with these additions, um, would you like to make a motion with your additions or? Very good. Can I get a second? I'm looking for a second. second. Thank you. So I have a motion by Commissioner Bays, a second by Commissioner Davis for G3. Uh, would anyone from the public like to speak on this? Seeing none, is there any more board discussion? Thank you. Um, just one question after a meeting with Mr. Rubio today. Um, we had talked about possible grant money coming down. Would be great from a state yeah. standpoint. Uh, Mr. McGee would be ready to roll, but are, are we ready with the project? I, I seem to think that maybe we weren't ready with numbers and a plan. I don't know how, I would have to ask Mr. McGee, how ready do we need to be to add it to the list if we don't have identified plan or property yet? Are you done? Yeah. I, I did ask that. And I said, you know, what would you need? And he said right. he would get with Mr. Rubio to, so that he would have that information before he I'm went. I'm getting a nod from Mr. Rubio, so we're good. Okay, that's all I need to know from you. Okay. <laughs> Anything good. else, Commissioner Bays? Okay. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 We have three uh, opposed. We have three zero right now. We'll ask Commissioner Davis when she gets back. Okay. We have nothing for... Item H, item I, advisory board announcements, nominations, and appoint, appointments. Um, Mr. Howard, um, you have the announcements and nominations? I, I do have a few of those, uh, except with regret the resignation of board appointed citizen member Timothy Gilbert from the Value Adjustment Board. Uh, we're going to announce the vacancy available in taking applications for one citizen member position on the Value Adjustment Board. The citizen member must own homesteaded property in Citrus County. Applications are available on the clerk of, of the circuit courts uh, and comptroller's website at www.citrusclerk.org. We'll have that on the website. The second uh, announcement is announce the vacancies for the MPO Transportation Disadvantaged Local Coordinating Board. Uh, and there's two vacancies. One is for the Citrus County resident. The uh, has to be over 60 years of age. And the other uh, it would be a Citrus County resident citizen advocate uh, the Citrus County resident vacancies are for three-year staggered terms. Appointments will be made by the MPO Metropolitan Planning Organization. Very good. And the last item uh, is to nominate and appoint members of the Avi Aviation Advisory Board uh, and to nominate and appoint one member at large position to the Aviation Advisory Board and B, nominate and appoint one District 2 regular member position to the Aviation Advisory Board and C, nominate and appoint one District 3 regular member position of the Aviation Advisory Board. The terms will be for two years and will expire on January 31st, 2025. Within your packet are uh, some names that have uh, applied. Okay. Um, board, we have a member at a large position open. We have a member at large position open and a 
so district two and district three member position open. Um, how many applications did we get for district for each district? No, there's two that are uh, seeking reappointment, um, but I think there was one for looks like there was it's like two for district one, one for four, one for three, and then one for two. But there are two seeking reappointment, which is a member at large in the district three, um, but only uh, looks like only one applicant for district two. At least that's what this the documentation says here. Madam Chair, are you looking for a motion on just I three? I was in. It didn't sound like you cleared I one and I two well, yet. Are we doing it I all will, as one? Uh, I'll I'll come back to that. Okay. Let me run the board, please. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your help. I'm just no. no I'm just we're confused because I, I could hear, but it just we're on this item different. right now. We're okay. on the uh, I the aviation okay. board. So, do you have anything that you would like to say about that? Um, Yes, I've been attending uh, most of the AB meetings, and I would be supportive of uh, reappointing both Mr. Kallenbach and Mr. Michaels. Um, and I think we should reopen District 2. Um, Is that your motion? That's You weren't looking for one, but yes, was, that would yeah. be my motion. Um, Mr. Kallenbach spoke to it earlier that uh, as well, I believe. Yeah, I, I, I know there's a lot of people that have right. mentioned to me that they're interested in different districts. So I don't know how tied we are to like opening, just opening that to get some more applications. Is there a second? Uh, I will second that. Thank you. So do I need to repeat that? Do, you know, is there a problem opening it back up to get no. more? App no. Okay. Thank you. I have so a the, question. <laughs> so there's a motion on the floor. Um, Anything from the public? Would the public like to comment on this? Is he coming forward? No. Yes. Please state your name. Heiko Kallenbach, Chairman of the uh, Aviation Advisory Board for one more month, unless you reappoint me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to serve. Uh, I'm not sure what other comment I might have other than what I said earlier. If we don't have, but did I hear you correctly, Mr. Howard, that we do have an applicant from District It appears from this there's one, uh, but I think the, the there could be opportunities, I think, for more to actually apply, it sounds like. So that's the, what we were just, that's what the board was talking about. Okay. Discussing. Okay. In that, in that case, I would certainly encourage uh, the board to uh, to reopen the, the application window for District 2 in order to give as many uh, qualified applicants the opportunity to uh, step forward as possible. Yeah. Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing none, board discussion? Commissioner Bays? Commissioner Finnegan? <clears throat> yes. Uh, I guess that was my question, um, Mr. Cullenbeck, because you came before and said there was no applicants for District 2, and then I was confused because there is an applicant for District 2. I mean, he looks like he was a commander in the Navy. Mm. Um, and then you'll have to forgive me because, you know, I'm new and I'm not familiar with the advisory board. I did not know you were chair. And um, I only have the information that's given to me. And for you, for example, there's really not any information here. So you weren't on my list to choose only for that reason, because I only have who, whoever submitted some did lengthy resumes and applications, and I just didn't have that from you. So um, I feel like I made some choices. I yeah. might be a little fish yeah. out of water. No. I'm just very honest. So I thought I'd just no, throw that no, out there. No, I'm sorry. Heiko, you can't come back up. You've already oh. spoken once. Sorry. sorry. I know she, she asked you a question. Right she was, but that, that the questions go through me, please. Thank you. Well, I guess that that's, That's your just, question. That So yeah. my question was, I didn't understand why um, there was discussion about opening it back up as there were no applicants when there clearly is an applicant for District 2. So I was um, not understanding that. And then just explaining to the nice gentleman that's here that must be serving um, on the board currently, but I'm just explaining that um, for those of us that knew and maybe don't know the ins and outs of this board, we make decisions based on the paperwork in front of us. So I just wanted to clarify that. Right. And I understand that you're saying that you see his application, but you don't see his resume. Yes. Okay. And it's very short and basic. Right. And there were other um, resumes that detailed the experience of other people. 
Right. Um, I'm. I seconded the motion. I. Um, is there any other board discussion? We have a motion and a second on the floor. Um, does anybody want to answer to Commissioner Finnegan's, Mr. Howard? Yeah, that I can. I one thing I what I would encourage is I think there's an opportunity actually because I'm getting a lot of citizens reaching out to me wanting to explore some of these opportunities. I think we may be able to work together to get more promotion out there, maybe on social media and other applications to actually make sure we're getting as many applicants as we can. Because I'm starting to get a lot of calls. I actually had some calls on this saying we would they would have liked to apply. So th that's maybe an opportunity maybe to have a even a larger pool. But you do have a lot of talent here. It's amazing the talent you have in Citrus County. That's just something I would add that I think we can maybe uh, work collectively to try to even reach a larger pool of qualified applicants. Right. And and the, the issue I had is when we did this last year, I think we had 10 or 15 applications. So I don't know if something got missed in the communication of this position. That's why I wanted to kind sure. of open it up a Absolutely. little bit more. Um, Commissioner Davis. Yes, just to... Um, give you maybe a little bit more comfort with this and, and why I would say to uh, reopen it is, um, well, you know, kind of know the month I've just had, so I didn't do the due diligence that I normally do. When we had 15 applicants, I think I, I called a good half of them and actually had personal conversations and told them that if somebody else was indeed nominated, I would still love for them to start attending and do that whole cheerleader for the county kind of thing to get more of that. So we only have one applicant. Um, somebody said something to me that brought up that there might be um, some reason that maybe that's not a good idea. And I just feel like let's look at um, what Mr. Howard said, that this is an opportunity to really cast the net a little bit wider. And then I'll also I'll be back on form as sort of the aviation Guru. specialist guru mm -hmm. on the board to actually get more involved in Can I ask figuring a that out. Yes, ma'am. The motion, so is the motion to just open District 2 or open it all? Just two. Because, At this time, just two. Because, um, as I said, I've gone to a lot of the AAB meetings, and I am very comfortable leaving Luis Michaels and Heiko Collin back on the board because they're both doing, they're both in aviation and they're both doing a really good job. And so. I wouldn't doubt that because mm -hmm. you would be the one to know. Yeah. I just feel like, and I don't know where we are legally with that, if we open up one, I feel like we should open up them all because how is that fair to the one applicant that got the announcement, applied on time, did everything he was supposed to do, and then we're saying, well, we're just going to open up that one. I, I would be more comfortable if we just extended the application date for this entire board. And then maybe those same people that you're very confident with, we could just vote in later with everybody. Well, right now there is a motion on the floor to to accept that. Let's, um, we've opened it to the public. We've, you set your... Uh, You've discussed your points. At this time, um, I'm going to call for the vote of uh, the motion to reappoint Heiko Kallenbach <coughs> and Louise Michaels and then open up District 2 so that people will have an opportunity to um, apply. So board, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. OK, so 2-2. Two, two. So, board, I'm looking for. Um, yes, Madam Commissioner Chair, I, I would have to agree with Commissioner Finnegan. I think if you're going to open, reopen something that's on the agenda, you have to do it for both districts. You can't show favoritism from one to the other. I think it needs to be open, reopen, and let people reapply. If we're going to do it, it we need to do it across the board, and then let them come back, and we can do it next next board meeting or the meeting after whatever it is but i i do feel that that is i i don't think it would look well on this board to okay. reopen it for one district and not the other so is that your motion yes ma'am okay we have a motion on the floor i'm looking for a second second any public comment on the motion on the floor board discussion yes um I assume we would leave uh, Mr. Michaels and Mr. Kallenbach in place yes, until that happens. Yes, then I would be comfortable with that. 
just from a point of clarification, it's been my experience, hardly anyone in this county knows what district they're in because we are open voting. You know, there is no district on the voting. And so they will apply for two when they live in four, for example. And my understanding is that staff does keep all of those applicants on file. So, you know, my, my point on the last motion was simply that people are going to apply anyway. And when a seat comes open, they'll be considered. So, but I'm comfortable with the motion as long as we're leaving those two in place. Madam Chair. Yes. I think we keep applications for a year. I think so too. Yeah. So That's those what, what 10 might have yep. expired, might be past the year point. Yeah, we'll care, we'll... But I think to the administrator's point, his way of getting information out, making things more highlighted within our community that we have these capabilities and openings i think i think that's the point that we're trying to right. get at is that we're really going to do a better job of public relations and getting information out and getting the, the public engaged to to serve with us very good um, okay any i just want to encourage other applicants if they've already applied that we only we, we may not know you from before, so maybe they want to submit additional information. Very good. Um, for board review. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, we have a motion on the floor to open this up, and we're going to bring it back. Your motion said in a month? I think so. Well, whatever the, I don't, the advertisement requirements and things like that, but we'll do this okay. rapidly as we can. Yes. And we have a second. Board, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. That passes 4-0. Thank you. Okay, committee reports from commissioners. Commissioner Diana Finnegan. Nothing, ma'am. Thank you. Commish no, Jeff Kennard, no. Uh, Commissioner Rebecca Bays. I have nothing. Thank you. Commissioner Davis. I don't believe we have any committees in the last four weeks. No, and I, I have nothing either. Thank you. Uh, County Attorney Denise Lynn. I have nothing. Thank you. This time, we're going to open to the public, second time. Yes, sir. Did you fill out, did you fill out a green card? No. <laughs> I'm legal in this country. I was born in Puerto Rico as a U.S. citizen. Don't need Very a green good. card. Welcome. But I'm representing the Florida Department of Health <laughs> today. So and what then, I'm bringing. And your name is. My name is Ernesto Rubio, Administrative Florida Department of Health. Thank you, sir. Here in Citrus County. So why I'm coming up, as I mentioned earlier, you know my pending retirement is the 31st of May. Uh, the state of Florida has advertised my position that closed at the end of November. We are looking for a representative from the Board of County Commissioners so that we can do interviews. We are planning interviews in the first part of February. So what I'm asking the commissioners is consensus of who you would like to have on those uh, board. Madam Chair. Yes. Point of clarification, you're not particularly looking for a commissioner. You're looking for somebody from who? the BOCC organization. Correct. Who okay. you would like either a commissioner or who you would like representing the BOCC at that Give, given um, given her um, both degree and career in health, I would very much like Maricel Rodriguez to volunteer, be voluntold for that. <laughs> I would agree with that. Thank and you. Potentially Steve Howard as well. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I would just like to ask, um, actually, I'm sorry, um, Mr. Rubio. Is it unusual to have the administrator and the assistant administrator? Because we are in a growth period right now, and I think that uh, we could utilize both Ms. Rodriguez's um, outlook and Mr. Howard's outlook. Would that be acceptable if, if I The, the answer is yes. There? Okay. It would okay. be very acceptable to the state. Uh, you, you know, every, every county is different because we do this in 67 counties. So, um, but whatever is the pleasure of the board, we can, we can work with it. Thank you. Okay. So, um, we're just giving direction. This is not a motion, correct? D Denise, I'm talking to you. Well, I, I don't think you can take action on something that's not on the agenda. Right. So, I, so you're asking the staff. For, you're, we're giving direction. That's what I just asked you. Yes, you're giving direction to the administrator. Yes. Would you like to give direction or Commissioner Finnegan? 
Um, I would just, uh, I would like to see Marisol Rodriguez, and if I assume you could hopefully make room in your schedule, Steve Howard as well, to be involved in the hiring process and for our new, and, and bring tissues because we're going to be sobbing when we lose Tito. Mm -hmm. So, commissioners, we're looking for a consensus. Commissioner Bays, are you in agreement of that? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Finnegan? Yes, ma'am. And I am also, so there you go. Thank you. And thank you, Commissioner Davis. Okay, so we are now at upcoming meetings. Item R, our regular meeting is January 24th, 2023 at 1 p.m. right here in this building. The next regular meeting is February 7th, 2023 at 1 p.m. right here in this, this room uh, in Inverness, Florida. And then February 28th at 1 p.m. right here also. And uh, we have upcoming workshops and scheduled meetings. We have a governing body of Special Library District of Citrus County, January 24th, 2023 at 10 a.m. here in room 100, uh, 110 North Apopka Avenue, Inverness, Florida, right here. And then the BOCC Strategic Planning Retreat, January 25th, 2023 at 9 a.m. at the Lakanto Government Building, at, and that is 3600 West Sovereign Path, Conference Room 166, Lakanto, Florida. And I have to buy the commissioner's lunch, so I would please ask for your lunch request, reasonable lunch request, Oscar thank you. Oscar Pens, no? And, um, <laughs> and then I will be happy to buy you lunch. I'm sure she could fly something in. <laughs> And at this Main time, <laughs> item T is a public hearing. We have none. So it is my pleasure to adjourn this meeting. Thank you.